talked about the surgical hemorrhages they can be primary reactionary or secondary any bleed during surgery will be called as primary hemorrhage any bleed within 24 hours of surgery will be called as reactionary hemorrhage any bleed which is more than 24 hours or mainly more than 5 days of surgery is called as secondary hemorrhage most common cause of primary hemorrhage is a bleeder that means during surgery you have injured a vessel then most common cause of reactionary hemorrhage is a slippage of ligature or not that you have tied definitely that has slipped okay slippage of ligature and most common cause of secondary hemorrhage is nothing but a infection of the surgical site treatment if it is a primary hemorrhage that means the patient is open in front of you so treatment will be directly just cauterization of the vessel if it is a small vessel or we can go for a ligation of the vessel if it is a larger one okay next if it is a reactionary hemorrhage now the ligature has slipped therefore the patient will have massive bleed and that is the reason here we need to go for re-exploration and re-ligation of the surgical site where inside the ot okay not in the emergency in the ot itself and if the patient comes with secondary hemorrhage the cause is infection so treatment will be obvious antibiotics iv or oral iv antibiotics and for iv antibiotics always admit the patient okay so as the patient is having massive bleeding how much few hours after surgery so it is a type of reactionary hemorrhage as it is a reactionary hemorrhage the treatment should be re-exploration of the surgical site in the operation theater question number 202 a two-year-old child presents with abdominal pain blood in stools along with the palpable saucer shaped lump i've told you blood in stools are called as which kind of stools red current jelly stools right please remember along with this saucer shaped lump is there olive shaped lump is a feature of cfps and genital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis but saucer shaped lump the susception okay when one sent adjacent part as shown in this image okay important barium enema is performed and it has been given below what are the two classical signs of barium enema first sign that you can see is known as the claw sign and the second sign over here is known as the coiled spring sign so please remember the two signs of intersusception on a barium enema first one is known as the claw sign second is known as the coiled spring sign but investigation of choice for intersusception will be investigation of choice for intersusception is usually a cct abdomen or if the child is very small we can go for a ultrasound abdomen and what is seen on ultrasound abdomen the classical target sign sometimes even a pseudo kidney sign so target sign is an important feature which is seen on intersusception on ultrasound abdomen no issues with this anybody this code donut sign we both have right a ring here uske andar dusri ring hai na so definitely this is called as the target sign also called as the bullseye sign also called as the donut sign it's one and the same thing okay please remember so the diagnosis in this condition will nothing else but intersusception intersusception usually the most common site for an intersusception is iliocolic when the ileum goes into the cecum that is called as the iliocolic Perception. Please remember this. No issues with this. Associated with with vaccination. Kal this is the other. Rota virus. What is the treatment? Anybody? Very good. So treatment is nothing else but enema usually. Contrast enema. First, that contrast of barium enema can help us to make a diagnosis, and then later it can also help us to make help us for treatment. So that contrast enema. If we are nemo. That's hydrostatic reduction okay that's important no issues with this this is a case of out pouching from the intestine this is a case of meckel's diverticulum congenital or acquired congenital true or false true because it contains all the layers of intestine please remember it is seen usually in the ileum please remember it is due to partial patency of which duct vitello intestinal duct mesenteric or anti-mesenteric border anti-mesenteric border which rule, rule is followed rule of Two two percent population two inches long, two feet proximal to the ileocecal junction, and twenty percent people showing ectopic mucosa. Most common ectopic mucosa is gastric mucosa. Investigation of choices: technetium ninety nine per technate scan. Treatment will be if it is wide base and a wide mouth, leave as it is. If it has a narrow base and a narrow mouth, go for resection. Please remember that is diverticulectomy.
Okay, what is this? Barium enema showing with sign classical? Saw tooth appearance. Saw tooth appearance and barium enema is a classical feature of diverticulosis of colon. More common in which age group? Elderly patient. Single diverticula or multiple? Multiple diverticulae will be there. Okay, treatment will be resection and anastomosis. Please remember this. What is this? Plain X-ray abdomen showing? Coffee, coffee bean sign and barium enema showing? Bird beak appearance. Barium swallow showing bird beak appearance. Answer is achalasia cardia. But barium enema showing bird beak appearance. Answer is sigmoid volvulus. Twisting of the sigmoid colon. Most common site for volvulus is the sigmoid colon itself. Investigation of choice is a CT with contrast. Okay, so contrast CT is the investigation of choice. No issues with this. Question number 203. A patient was suffering from sepsis. That is severe infection which has spread to multiple organs now. And he started developing multiple organ dysfunction. You wanted to assess his Q-SOFA score. Q-SOFA score tells you about what? That how many systems of the patient's body are working or they have failed. Okay? That is the SOFA score. SOFA is what? Full form. Pucha tha. Sequential or sepsis related organ failure assessment score. So it will tell you about the organ failure. Please remember that. Okay. So sequential or sepsis related organ failure assessment score should be the uh, score is known as SOFA score. But SOFA score had multiple parameters. Therefore, we came with a Q SOFA score. The small Q stands for quick SOFA score. Mnemonic jaldi se. Dusra. Last time tu hi tha. Theek hai. Next is. Bar definitely remember so either bar or GB road just go join us the flow important is definitely so B stands for what systolic blood pressure less than 100 millimeters of mercury A stands for altered mental status okay altered mental status can be assessed with the help of GCS okay Glasgow coma scale so it is one and the same thing and R stands for respiratory rate more than 22 breaths per minute so answer should be option B. Question number 204. A patient who was a known case of ulcerative colitis has developed an ulcerative lesion on the shin with undermined edges. What is the likely diagnosis? Shabash. It is a case of pyoderma gangrenosum. Three ulcers with undermined edges. Fud, fud. Pyoderma gangrenosum. Undermined matlab inward edges. SA. Okay. Second. Chancroid, painful genital ulcer and painful lymphadenopathy. Third, tubercular ulcer. Very good, tubercular ulcer. These are the three ulcers with undermined edges. Please remember that. And pyoderma gangrenosum is commonly seen on shin. Important is it is associated with two conditions. One is ulcerative colitis. Second is rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, that's important. Marjolin's ulcer will be present on a scar of burn. So it is seen in a seen on a burn scar usually. It can be painless. It can be painful as well. Okay, important. Apart from that, it will be rapidly increasing in size and there will be higher risk of transformation into squamous cell carcinoma as well. No issues with this. So if they are giving a ulcer over a burn scar or they are giving history of burns with painful or a painless ulcer, it which is rapidly increasing in size and there is a higher risk of squamous cell carcinoma. Answer should be margulins ulcer. Squamous cell carcinoma or margulins ulcer. Kaise edges dikte? Everted, rolled down, uh, everted edges, raised, everted cauliflower-like edges are usually a feature of margulin ulcer or squamous cell carcinoma. Rolled out edges are a feature of basal cell carcinoma, that is a rodent ulcer. Next, superficial, multiple superficial ulcer above the medial malleolus in the gator's area of leg with history of varicose veins, for example. It is a case of venous ulcer. Which kind of edges? Sloping edges, please remember. Next, a single deep ulcer. Or again, about the medial malleolus. But this time, painful ulcer. This is a case of punched out edges. Arterial ulcer. Arterial ulcer me kaise edges hote? Punched out edges. Punched out edges are also seen in this ulcer. This ulcer is known as trophic ulcer. So please remember, trophic ulcer is also having punched out edges. So differentiate kaise karoge? Arterial ulcer is painful or painless? Painful. But trophic ulcer is pain 
less ulcer. Trophic ulcer can be seen in patient of diabetes, mellitus, or in cases of leprosy. And last one is heal. It is a type of trophic ulcer only, but it is called as a pressure sore. Most common site for a pressure sore is, say, uh, it is ischium followed by sacrum followed by the heel. Okay, what is this? Ne very good. Necrolytic migratory erythema. That means erythematous or a red color rash with central clearing. As you can see, central clearing. Okay, and it will keep on changing its side, one side to another. Therefore, it is called as migratory. So, necrolytic migratory erythema associated with which pancreatic tumor? Shabash. It is associated with glucagonoma. This was a previous question twice in FMG. Question number 205. A patient presents with regurgitation of food, dysphagia and halitosis. Dysphagia is difficulty swallowing. Okay, and the swelling in the lateral aspect of the neck, which on pressing gives a gurgling sound like this. What is the sign called as? Voicey sign. When we press a neck swelling and we get a hissing sound, that is known as Brycey sign. So hissing is known as Brycey sign. And Brycey sign is a feature of laryngoceal. Please remember, Brycey sign is a feature of laryngoceal. Laryngoceal is usually seen in which players? Trumpet or Shahnai players, okay, where there is a neck swelling which arises due to abnormal dilatation of saccule. Please remember this, okay. Here in laryngoceal, the investigation can be first line will be x ray, best will be CT scan, treatment will be surgical excision. Now, here definitely there is regurgitation of food, dysphagia, and halitosis. These are suggestive of symptoms due to some esophageal or pharyngeal pathology. Very good. So, definitely the barium swallow is given. It shows outpouching from the esophagus. So, it is a case of Zenkers. Regurgitation, dysphagia, halitosis are seen in two conditions. First is Ecclesia, Cardia and second is Zenkers, Diverticulum. So, here it is a case of Zenkers, Diverticulum. Most common site for Zenkers, Diverticulum is Killian's dehiscence within the inferior constrictor muscle between two fibers, oblique known as thyropharynges, circular known as cricopharynges fibers. Investigation of choices. CT with contrast or a barium, swallow itself would work. Okay, important. And Zenkers diverticulum treatment is less than 2 cm, cricopharyngeal myotomy. Okay, 2 to 4 cm, diverticulopexy. And more than 4 cm, Dohelman's procedure known as diverticuloesophagostomy. Please remember, Zenkers diverticulum is not an option. It is also called as pharyngeal pouch. This is what? This is the bird beak appearance on barium swallow seen in Achalesia cardia. Investigation of choices. Esophageal manometry. Pressure will be between 25 to 100 millimeters of mercury. If pressure is more than equal to 180, it is known as nutcracker esophagus. Pressure more than 300 will cause this condition. Diffuse or distal esophageal spasm. Classical appearance is known as corkscrew appearance please remember this is the bird beak also known as bird beak appearance is also known as pencil tip appearance treatment of choice for achalasia cardia surgery known as heller's myotomy but for distal esophageal spasm it is only a myotomy surgery no issues with this anybody what is this barium swallow showing a fibrotic ring in the esophagus known as the skadsky ring most of the patients are a symptomatic no treatment but symptomatic ho to balloon dilatation. 206. A postpartum female presented to OPD with pain, fullness and swelling in the breast. She gives history that the child refuses the feed but does not give history of fever. What is the best treatment option for her? Provisional diagnosis. It is a case of breast. Agar meri class mein baitne ke baad, kisi ne abscess iska diagnosis bana mein batata. Important is, the child is refusing the feed. Please remember, that means all the milk is collecting inside the breast as she is in lactation period. Okay, she is not having any inflammatory signs. She is not having fever. It cannot be a case of mastitis. It cannot be a case of abscess. It is only a case of breast engorgement. Means milk jamai abhi uski breast mein. Therefore, treatment will be express the milk with warm or moist compresses. If they say there is redness, there is swelling, along with that there is pain and there is warmth at the site. That can be a case of mastitis. Mastitis ke liye most common causes staph or yes, most common sources, baby's mouth. Treatment will be anti 
biotics, antibiotics, C first is amoxy, clav, that is amoxicillin plus clavulinic acid. Not an option, go for cloxacillin or dicloxacillin. No problem. That further progresses. Late sign can be like this. What are you showing? Fluctuant swelling can be there right? in the breast. Fluctuant swelling along with all the inflammatory signs like red, redness, pain, warmth and swelling. Along with the fluctuant swelling or a ultrasound showing a fluid collection. That can be a diagnosis of breast abscess. Okay. This can be cause the same. Staph aureus. Treatment for breast abscess. Initially, we can try aspiration, but the treat best treatment will be incision and drainage. Which number blade? 11 number blade along with antibiotic. Question number 207. A patient comes to OPD with complaints of hoarseness of voice recently and gives history of retrosinal burn, sour brush. That means a bitter taste in the mouth. Okay. And there is epigastric pain. Which among the following is next best step in management? Diagnosis. Good. It is a case of gastroesophageal reflex disease. When the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes too frequently or it does not relax at all? When it relaxes too frequently. Therefore, the acid from stomach can go into the esophagus. That is gastroesophageal reflux disease. Due to obesity, due to alcohol, smoking or another risk factors like fried fatty food. Important is the patient will have due to reflux, definitely retrosinal burn or retrosinal pain. Chest pain, epigastric pain. Important is the acid can come into the larynx and that will cause damage to the vocal cords leading to hoarseness of voice. That can come into the mouth causing that sour brush or that will cause damage to the teeth leading to dental caries as well. Here, here, good myth. Treatment of choice or drug of choice is same. That is PPI, proton pump inhibitor group of prazole. And if the patient does not improve even with PPI, first line is lifestyle modification. Drug of choice is PPI. Treatment of choice is PPI. If the patient does not improve with PPI, then we will go for upper GI endoscopy plus biopsy. Her GERD ki patient mein directly upper GI endoscopy nahi karte ho tum. So, mein pata hai na, clinical diagnosis hai GERD ka, to start PPI first. Thik hai? So, PPI start kara jata hai. Practically, logically, wahi sahi hota hai. PPI start karo. If the patient does not respond, then we will go for flexible endoscopy and biopsy. Please remember, investigation of choice, kya likha hai mera tumhe? Upper GI endoscopy. Agar on upper GI endoscopy, nothing is seen. Then the gold standard investigation is the 24-hour pH monitoring. Okay, 24-hour pH monitoring is the gold standard investigation. What do I mean by gold standard? Done in every patient? No. Only limited to those patients on which the investigation of choice fails. That's important. ठीक है क्या क्या हाँ तो management diagnose management and treatment में दोनों में difference होता है कुछ treatment is only treatment management is diagnosis plus treatment management अरे क्या होता है management patient को manage करना ना तो उसमें diagnosis बनाना भी आ गया और treat करना भी आ गया तो management और treatment दोनों अलग अलग चीजें हैं dictionary देखो important so, okay. If this also fails, if flexible endoscopy biopsy also fails, if 24 hour pH monitoring also fails, then we will go for surgery. And then that surgery of choice is Nissen's fundoplication. Nissen's fundoplication is surgery of choice at two places. First is good, and second is hiatal hernia. Please remember that. What is this? Upper G endoscopy showing red velvety mucosa in the esophagus. It is a case of Barrett's. Esophagus. When I take a biopsy from this, what I'll be able to see? The stratified squamous epithelium will change into columnar epithelium, which looks just like the intestinal epithelium. Therefore, this will be called as intestinal metaplasia. But the hallmark of Barrett's on biopsy is the mucine secreting cells known as goblet cells. Okay. And this is the essence fundoplication when the fundus of the stomach is wrapped around the esophagus. Question number 208. An elderly male has been rescued from a burning building. He was lying unconscious when spotted by the rescue team. His face is blistered and there is signing of nasal hairs. Okay. His blood pressure is 114 by 76. Heart rate is 90 beats per minute. Respiratory rate is 30 per minute. That means he is having respiratory distress. 
ठीक है नेक्स्ट स्टेप इन मैनेजमेंट शुड बी इट इज अ केस ऑफ विच काइंड ऑफ बर्न्स इनहेलेशनल बर्न्स मैंने क्या बोला था इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू मैनेज अ केस ऑफ इनहेलेशनल बर्न्स द रीजन इज अदरवाइज द पेशेंट विल डाई ऑफ हाइपोक्सिया और एसफाइक्सिया राइट कब हम इनहेलेशनल बर्न सस्पेक्ट करते हैं वेन अ पेशेंट वॉज ट्रैप्ड इन अ क्लोज बर्निंग रूम वेरी स्मॉल बर्निंग रूम सेकेंड वेन द पेशेंट इज हैविंग एनी बर्न इन द फेस और इन द नेक रीजन दैट टाइम थर्ड इफ देर इज साइनिंग और बर्निंग ऑफ नेजल हेयर इफ देर इज एनी ब्लैक सूट पार्टिकल प्रेजेंट इन साइड इज स्प्यूटम इफ द पेशेंट इज हैविंग होर्सनेस ऑफ वॉइस दैट इज सजेस्ट ऑफ लारेंजल एडिमा एंड लारेंजल एडिमा विल बी ड्यू टू इनहेलेशनल बर्न तो इसीलिए इनहेलेशनल बर्न इंपॉर्टेंट है बिकॉज दे विल कॉज इन्फ्लामेशन ऑफ द एयर वे विच विल लीड टू लारेंजल एडिमा and therefore the patient will have respiratory distress the patient can land up into respiratory arrest and the patient can die theek hai therefore the immediate management should be prophylactic or early elective intubation bhale hi patient mein zyada respiratory distress nahi we will go for intubation because if we wait what is going to happen the laryngeal edema is going to increase and finally it will be very difficult to perform a intubation that's the reason why the next step in management should be intubation then we can take care of hypovolemia as well q q ki most common cause of immediate death in burns asphyxia or hypoxia followed by neurogenic shock most common cause of early death in burns is hypovolemic shock usually for early death that means the patient dies within 24 to 48 hours hypovolemic shock immediate death nahi karta hai early death karta hai to pehle hypoxia ko manage karo fir hypovolemic shock pe jao theek hai so that's important ATLS protocol follow होता है burns के लिए airway breathing circulation that's it ठीक है important is that and most common cause of late death in burns after three to five days sepsis most common cause of death in burns overall sepsis most common organism pseudomonas question number two zero nine an infant was brought with complaints of constipation even after using a lot of laxatives ठीक है mother gives history that the child didn't pass stools in the first forty eight hours of life the first stools of the child are called as meconium Here there is a delayed passage of meconium usually. ठीक है? Delayed passage of meconium is meconium ileus. Meconium ileus is seen in two condition. Anybody? One is called as Hirschsprung's disease, also known as congenital aganglionosis, and second is cystic fibrosis. Please remember, okay? Because the meconium is very hard in cystic fibrosis. That's the reason. ठीक है? What is the investigation of choice? What are you thinking over here? Hirschsprung's is seized okay there is absence of ganglionic cells in both the plexuses of intestine most common area affected is the recto sigmoid okay and definitely to see the ganglionic cells are present or absent the investigation of choice should be suction rectal biopsy or a full thickness rectal biopsy to see the extent of the disease investigation of choices to see the extent of disease investigation of choices MRI. If not an option, go for barium enema. It will tell you how much segment is a ganglio. Therefore, you have to cut that particular segment. Now, what is the surgeries which are done in Hirschsprung disease? Do Hamel's operation, Swenson's operation, so and Park's colonial anastomosis. Okay, that's important. Question number two zero two one zero. Easiest. What should be the treatment treatment of the condition given below in the image? Diagnosis. Dermoid cyst, collection of some epithelial element in the outer canthus of eye. What is the treatment? Surgical excision. Please remember. What is this? So usually a swelling which is having thick material, paste-like material coming out of it. Very good. Seen in only areas where where we have hair follicles. This is nothing but a sebaceous cyst. Common sites are scalp and the scrotum. Treatment is surgical excision. Next is what is this? Ranula. We have discussed transillumination test is positive. Treatment is surgical excision. Second best is Mars opalization. What is this? Parotid swelling. Hallmark of a parotid swelling is it will lift the ear lobule up. Okay, it can be due to parotid abscess, parotitis, or a parotid tumor. कुछ भी हो सकता है. But a parotid swelling का hall parotid swelling का hallmark क्या होता है? That it lifts up the ear lobule with the help of swelling. Two one one. A patient came to the OPD with complaints of pus discharge and pain in the perianal region. On examination, tract was felt. Okay, 
and uh, which was opening into the anal canal. What is the best investigation to confirm the diagnosis in this patient? Important is there is pus discharge and there is pain in the perianal region. And when you feel the tract, you are inserting your finger from the skin, but it is opening into the anal canal. SC condition ko kya bolo? The diagnosis kya hai? It is a case of fistula in ano, also known as the perianal fistula. Now, it is a case of perianal fistula. What is the investigation of choice for perianal fistula? MRI. And that specific MRI will be called as MR fistulogram. If it is above the anorectal ring, it is a high fistula or a low fistula? High fistula. Treatment will be insertion of a thread known as seton thread. If it is a low fistula below the anorectal ring, treatment will be opening it up. That is fistulotomy. Otherwise, second best, fistulectomy. Hatai those ko, okay? Most common type, according to Park's classification, is the interspinctric fistula, okay? Which will open between the two sphincters. Question number 212. A patient after undergoing laparoscopic cholecystectomy a few days ago now complains of abdominal pain and there is also fever. That means the patient is actually in sepsis. MRCP reveals. There is dripping of bile from the cystic duct stump. That means the cystic duct ka bacha ko chha hissa tha. Vaase bile kya ho rhi hai? Leak ho rhi hai. So there is definitely bile leak after surgery. Okay, the patient is hemodynamically stable. Which of the following is done for management in this patient? So now, first of all, if I talk about during surgery, if there, if there is any bile duct injury. Yeh mein padha chuka bar bar. Now, partial injury. Kya karo ge? If there is bile duct injury during the surgery itself, if you get it, and it is a partial injury to the bile duct, what do you do? Repair immediately. Partial injury, you have to suture. Hai, kuch nahi. If it is a complete transaction, matlab, the bile duct is separated now. Complete transaction. Pura cut hai. Partial is this. Complete transaction is this. Now, but there is no loss of segment. Pura ka pura bile duct is different. There is a complete cut, but no loss of segment as such. If there is no loss of segment, repair it, but insert a T-tube. So here we will go for anastomosis over a T-tube. Anastomosis over a T-tube. If there is loss of segment, can you connect it back? Beach ka kuch hissa hi gaya bhe Ab connect kar sakte ho kya? Nahin. So better if jitni bhi CBD bachi hai, remove that CBD and take up your Vela dose and connect it. That is jejunum. So when we are connecting jejunum to the common hepatic duct, that is known as Ru N Y. Hepatico jejunostomy. Next is, if you see by leak after surgery, definitely. In this condition, if it is a minor leak, mostly the patient will be asymptomatic, no symptom, no sepsis, nothing. The patient will be absolutely stable. So, kuch karne ki zarod hai kya fir? Aai gai nahi tumhare paas hoi to. No intervention is required. If it is a major leak, then definitely the patient can develop symptom. Okay, if there is a major leak, then you need to perform what? Confirm diagnosis ke liye. MRCP or ERCP, which will show you the leak. If the patient comes to you within 48 hours, will the patient have sepsis? Vagara? No, there will be no, there will not be any features of sepsis like abdominal pain or fever. Okay, so there will be no sepsis. So, what do you do here? Immediate re-exploration and repair of the surgical site, which is having leak. But if the patient presents to you after two days, matlab the patient will be in sepsis, abdominal pain and fever. In this condition, you need to go for ERCP with stenting. So, my patient kab aaya hai? Few days ho chuke hai. Okay? Not within 48 hours of surgery. Second important, there is also abdominal pain and fever. That means the patient is in sepsis. So, which treatment will apply? This ERCP with stenting. Galat mat kar dena yaar ye. Question number 213. A 60-year-old menopausal female presented to the emergency department after falling on an outstretched hand on examination below given deformity is noticed what is the probable diagnosis what is this below given deformity known as when the fractured a uh, coli's fracture is the fracture of distal part of your radius and the distal fractured fragment will ventrally or dorsally dorsally and as it moves dorsally there is a dorsal displacement displacement of the fractured part that causes a dinner fork deformity so that is a classical dinner fork deformity which is seen any which way is what did i tell you after a fall on an outstretched hand in a 
post menopausal elderly osteoporotic patient the most common fracture is Foley's fracture okay so here the answer should be Foley's fracture Schaffer's fracture is the fracture of Schaffer's fracture is a fracture of radial void process please remember that scaphoid fracture is this one okay so scaphoid fracture agar ho jata hai the blood supply to the proximal part of the scaphoid is cut off and therefore there can be a vascular necrosis of which part of scaphoid proximal pole of scaphoid which is the most common site for a vascular necrosis most common site for a vascular necrosis in your body head of femur it is due to fracture neck of femur next second most common site is scaphoid okay here there is sorry avian of the proximal part of scaphoid due to fracture at waist of scaphoid and third site is body of talus usually it is known and there is a fracture at the neck of the talus known as which fracture aviatus fracture shabash ye image aa chuki hai exam mein what is this type of a cast called as glass holding cast so glass holding cast is used for which fractures scaphoid fracture now these are nothing but montegia fracture and galazi fracture dislocation you will find it in snaps itself theek hai निमोनिक जल्दी से बता दो कोई मुगर एक है निमोनिक और दूसरा है मूसा राइट इट विल बिकम इजियर इफ यू रिमेम्बर बोथ ऑफ देम हाउ इम्पोर्टेंट इज एम मॉन्टेजिया में कौन सा फ्रैक्चर होता है अलनार फ्रैक्चर और गैलियाजी में कौन सा फ्रैक्चर होता है रेडियल फ्रैक्चर ठीक है तो मॉन्टेजिया पहले आ रहा है दैट मीन्स अलना का प्रोक्सीमल फ्रैक्चर या डिस्टल फ्रैक्चर है प्रोक्सीमल पार्ट इज फ्रैक्चर गैलियाजी बाद में आ रहा है तो रेडियस का प्रोक्सीमल फ्रैक्चर या डिस्टल फ्रैक्चर है डिस्टल फ्रैक्चर नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट मूसा मॉन्टेजिया में अलना का फ्रैक्चर एंड कौन सा जॉइंट डिसलोकेटेड है सुपीरियर दैट इज सुपीरियर आर्टिकुलेशन और सुपीरियर जॉइंट इज डिसलोकेटेड दैट हाउ इट बिकम्स इजी तो गैलियाजी में उल्टा हो जाएगा गैलियाजी में कौन सा फ्रैक्चर है रेडियस का और कौन सा जॉइंट डिसलोकेटेड है इंफीरियर रेडियो अलनार जॉइंट नो इशूज विद दिस both of fractures of necessity open reduction and internal fixation is required both of them can cause compartment syndrome in the child as well please remember so coli's fracture as you can see the distal fragment is pushed dorsally therefore a dinner fork deformity is seen smith fracture is also a distal fracture distal radius fracture but this time the fractured fragment is pushed ventrally or anteriorly and therefore which kind of deformity garden spade deformity question number 214 A 70-year-old male comes to OPD with complaints of pain in the bilateral knee joints, along with swelling and pain in the PIP as well as DIP joint. Radiograph shows narrowing of the joint space. What is the likely diagnosis? पहले मुझे ये बताओ why you will rule out rheumatoid arthritis first. But but first of all, the age of the patient is more than 55. Usually, rheumatoid arthritis occurs in 25 to 55-year-old. females or males females that is the first reason second important knee joints are affected which joints are affected in ra smaller joints are affected in ra therefore that is the second rule out third dip joint is never affected in rheumatoid arthritis theek okay? hai that's important narrowing of joint can be seen next is gouty arthritis why we are ruled out over here please remember there is pain there is definitely but problem is knee joints are less likely involved in cases of gouty arthritis हमने उधर क्यों डायग्नोसिस बनाया बिकॉज देयर जॉइंट एस्पिरेशन फाइंडिंग्स वर गिवन ओके नथिंग बेटर देन दैट बट यहां पे वी विल नॉट सस्पेक्ट ओके डेफिनेटली गाउटी अर्थराइटिस एंड गाउटी अर्थराइटिस यूजुअली डस नॉट इन्वॉल्व द पीआईपी एंड डीआईपी जॉइंट्स ओके नेक्स्ट ऑस्टियाइटिस डिफॉर्मेंस इज नथिंग बट द पेजेट्स डिसीज ओके इन पेजेट्स डिसीज यूजुअली इन्फ्लेमेशन इज नॉट सीन तो इन्फ्लेमेशन अगर है तो ऑस्टियोअर्थराइटिस ऑस्टियोअर्थराइटिस इज मोर कॉमन इन द एल्डरली पेशेंट आफ्टर 60 इयर्स ऑफ Age most common joint involved are the knee joint. That too, bilateral knee joints are usually seen, and there is narrowing of the joint space mainly on which side? Medial aspect of knee or lateral aspect of knee? Medial aspect of knee, because it's more weight bearing. It is medial aspect. Pe. No issues with this, anybody? That is important. Okay. Osteoarthritis. Man, these fusiform swellings, which are seen in the PIP joints, are called as PIP joints are called as. Bouchard's nodes and in the DIP joint are called as Hebbard's node. जिसको दिक्कत आ रही है, B पहले आता है तो PIP में Bouchard node, H बाद में आता है तो DIP में Hebbard's nodes. 
Osteoarthritis is a degenerative disease. Why I call it degenerative? Because it is due to damage to the articular cartilage, due to which both the bones will friction over each other. Okay, important. There is cartilage loss, as you can see. And apart from that, there can be osteophytes which will be formed. There will be morning stiffness, but it will be less than 30 minutes. In RA, it will be more than 30 minutes. RA is autoimmune condition. Anti CCP antibodies are formed, which will damage the synovium. And there is inflammation of the synovium which is seen okay no issues with this a oa uh, can be symmetrical or it can be asymmetrical but ra is always and always a uh, symmetrical important is in ra we also have some extra articular involvement most common extra articular manifestation has been asked rheumatoid arthritis may most common extra articular outside the joint rheumatoid nodules very good skin nodules which are there these are known as rheumatoid nodules most common extra articular manifestation of rheumatoid arthritis 215 a child has been osteoarthritis mein nsaids dete ho tum aur kuch nahi de sakte question number 215 a child has been brought to you with complaints of recurrent bony fractures with hearing loss pure tone audiometry reveals sensory neural hearing loss and x-ray shows there are multiple calluses in many bones what is callus immature bone and callus is a hallmark of bone Healing or a fracture healing. So callus is nothing but a hallmark of fracture healing. Agar bahut thare bones mein tumhe calluses dikh rahe, that means there have been a lot of fractures in the bone. So that means multiple fractures along with sensory neural hearing loss in the child. What is the possible diagnosis? Osteogenesis M perfecta. Common A1 gene mutation. Okay, we have discussed about all the other three. Question number six. The below given splint is used in which condition? What is the splint known as anybody? Pollux harness. And pollux harness is used in which condition anybody? It is used in DDH. That is developmental dysplasia of hip. Which are the two tests performed in DDH anybody? Barlow's test and Orthodox test. know the name. And the splint which can be used is known as the Von Rosen splint. Please remember that. Okay. In CTV, that is congenital talipus equinus virus, the splint which is used is known as cuff float splint or the shoes are called as CTEV shoes. And the splint which is used is also known as Dennis Brown splint. Please remember, most common splint to be used is Kramer wire splint or the K wire splint. It is the most common splint to be used for fixation of any fracture. Baki discuss kar chuke. This was the previous year question. Milwaukee and a Boston's brace is used for scoliosis. Taylor's brace is used for thoracolumbar spine injury. Please remember this. Aeroplane splint is used for brachial plexus injury. Sub snap scheme is used for at least ortho, patho, derma. Ye in subject season ki image based question aate in ki to karlo. Fibrous dysplasia. Ponsi deformity dictia. Fibrous dysplasia. Shepherd. Croak deformity. Recent new PG question in 2023. It shows a Shepherd Croak deformity. Okay, please remember fibrous dysplasia usually. Okay. Question number 217. A person sitting in front uh, of the front seat of the car met with a road traffic accident. Following injury, his lower limb is in flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. Ponsai attitude of limb, flexion, adduction, internal rotation. Father. Father ko kya bolte ho? Papa. So, it is which hip dislocation? Posterior hip dislocation. That's how it becomes easier. Father, that means papa, that is posterior hip dislocation. X-ray was done and has been given below. Which is the most likely nerve injury in the given condition? Very good. As you can see, the head of the femur has been displaced posteriorly behind the acetabulum. So, it is definitely a case of posterior hip dislocation. Most common hip dislocation is posterior, anterior, superior or central posterior hip dislocation right and the most common nerve injured which goes behind the hip joint is known as the sciatic nerve it is the long largest nerve of your lower limb and if it is affected the patient will have pain in the buttocks as well as throughout the leg till the tip of the toe everywhere there will be pain lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh agar damage ho jati hai, the patient will have loss of sensations in upper thigh known as meralgia Parasthetica. It is the most common nerve injury in open hernia surgery or laparoscopic hernia surgery. Laparoscopic hernia surgery. Open hernia surgery may most common is ilio inguinal nerve. No issues with this. 
तो ये भी दिया हुआ है पोस्टीरियर हिप डिसोकेशन डैशबोर्ड इंजरी में होता है फादर इज दूड ऑफ लिम फ्लेक्शन अडक्शन इंटरनल रोटेशन इन एंटीरियर हिप डिसोकेशन फेबर इज दूड ऑफ लिम फ्लेक्शन अबडक्शन एक्सटर्नल रोटेशन टू वन एट अ थर्टी ईयर ओल्ड मेल प्रेजेंट विद स्वेलिंग इन द रेस्ट एरिया विद पेन एक्सरे हेज बिन गिवेन बिलोन हिस्टोपैथ रिवील्स मल्टी न्यूक्लिएटेड जाय एंड सेल्स वॉट इज द डायग्नोसिस so usually 20 to 30 year old male if they mention 20 to 40 theek okay, hai young male apart from that there is swelling okay that is likely suggest you of some cyst or some tumor x ray is showing what x ray is showing which appearance anybody so bubble appearance usually it is involving which part of the bone it is involving the distal radius but which part of the bone it is the epiphysis which is extending up to the meta Physes. So please remember, epiphyseal lesion extending up to the metaphyses, showing a soap bubble appearance in a young adult patient. Classically, case of a GCT, giant cell tumor. जिसने ये नहीं देखा, उसने आंसर मार्क कर नहीं करा. Okay, multinucleated giant cell. इससे अच्छा तो कुछ हो ही नहीं सकता. They have directly given it. ठीक है? So, multinucleated giant cell. That means it is a case of giant cell tumor. So answer is known as osteoblastoma. Okay, please remember that. Usually important is you need to remember three things to make a diagnosis of bone tumor. First, the age group of the patient. Second, the bones which are affected, and third, the site of the bone which is affected. Either it is diaphysis, metaphysis, or epiphysis. Epiphyseal bone tumor in a young patient is only osteoclastoma or a giant cell tumor. Metaphyseal bone tumors can be multiple of them. Metaphyseal bone tumor can be a chondroblastoma. Sorry, it can be a osteoblastoma. important it can be osteochondroma it can be osteosarcoma as well okay diaphyseal tumors these can be ewing sarcoma adamantinoma and osteoid osteoma theek okay? hai so that is important no issues with this so this is again the snapshot from the uh, snaps itself giant cell tumor osteoclastoma showing multinucleated giant cells along with that the classical soap bubble appearance please remember commonly in extent of radius but the most common site affected with giant cell tumor is not that the most common site affected is the lower end of femur it is the lower end of femur followed by the upper end of tibia okay followed by the upper end of tibia followed by the distal end of radius it is the third most common site okay lesions are extending up to the joint right till the epiphysis next what is the sign shown in unicameral or simple bone cyst fallen leaf sign also known as trap door sign no issues with this and what is this classical appearance again so bubble appearance but this time it is seen in aneurysmal bone cyst which is commonly seen in the upper end of humerus metaphysis or epiphysis metaphysis then okay so that's the difference no issues with this and this is commonly seen in patient between 10 to 20 years of age group so that's the basic difference again extended cutida so bubble appearance is again seen over here but it is only involving the small bones of hands and feet most common bone tumor for hand and feet is enchondroma no issues with this anybody please remember multiple enchondromatosis is known as which disease all years disease diya tha maine diagnosis or so tnd mein theek hai next here is send fmg jan 2023 question if you are seeing a overgrowth in the metaphyseal region of a bone this is actually a overgrowth not from the bone it is a overgrowth from the physeal plate therefore it is not called as a true bone tumor most common bone tumor definitely it can be osteochondroma most common benign bone tumor but most common true benign bone tumor it is not this one most common true benign bone tumor will be a osteoid osteoma okay it will be the osteoid osteoma then so please remember this is a osteochondroma can also be called as exostosis please remember that theek okay? hai then osteosarcoma इंपॉर्टेंट क्या दिख रहा है कौन से कौन से अपियरेंस यू गेट द्लासिकल सन रे और दन बर्स्ट अपियरेंस ड्यू टू दियोस्टियल रियक्शन एंड सेकेंड यू कैन सी लिफ्टिंग ऑफ द पेरियोस्टियम नोन एज कॉडमैन ट्राइंगल एविंग सार्कोमा यूजली अकर्स इन चिल्ड्रेन लेस देन ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ओके मोस्ट इट शुड बी मोस्ट कॉमनली सीन इन वन टू टेन ईयर बट पेशेंट कॉमनली कम्स टू अस इन टेन टू ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ऑफ एज देर विल बी इट विल मेमेक वॉट ऑस्टियो Myelitis, very good. It will mimic an infection. Fever, hoga, swelling, hoga, pain, hoga, redness, hoga. Ye hoga. Isi liye 
having sarcoma is the bone tumor which will mimic osteomyelitis or a bone infection classical appearance will be this onion peel appearance please remember that and it will involve the mid thigh region because it is a diaphyseal tumor next is osteoid osteoma is also a diaphyseal tumor characteristic feature kya hota hai this is a nidus nidus is a important feature of osteoid osteoma question number 219 An elderly patient presented with multiple painful blisters on an erythematous base or a red color base, as shown below. Okay, patient gives history of fever and rashes in the childhood also. What is the likely cause? It is. It is a case of diagnosis. Can I approach the diagnosis? Very good. It is a case of shingles, and shingles is nothing but it is reactivation of human herpes virus type three. That is herpes zoster virus, also known as varicella zoster virus, also known as chicken pox virus. So, बच्चे में ये जो history दे रहे हैं वो fever and rashes की that was actually chicken pox he developed. And now during chicken pox he was not treated adequately. Therefore, this herpes zoster virus remain in an inactive state or a dormant state. Where that was a question. Tulsar root ganglion. and when the patient became immunocompromised that means when he became elderly that time there was reactivation of this herpes zoster virus which is causing this painful blisters okay so that is a case of herpes zoster virus theek okay? hai this hand foot mouth disease when there will be lesions in the hand feet as well as the oral cavity classical sarkar question exam ka it is a case of coxsackie virus coxsackie a 16 and these are anogenital warts caused by human papilloma virus anogenital warts laryngeal warts these are caused by hpv 6 and 11 most common 6 more virulent 11 but cancers by 16 and 18 this is molluscum contagiosum which kind of lesions will be seen poorly umbilicated papules which bodies will be seen henderson peterson bodies causative agent is pox virus a brick shaped virus koi dikkat nahi hai this is slap cheek appearance seen in erythema infectiosum also known as fifth disease caused by parvovirus b19 please remember it can also cause it can also lead to aplastic crisis aplastic anemia and aplastic crisis in the child theek hai herpes virus hsv1 causes above waist oral herpes okay and or also known as herpes labialis and hsv2 causes below waist that is genital herpes usually herpes zoster known as shingles and herpes zoster ophthalmic is when it involves the chin recent question when it involves the ear herpes zoster oticus also known as ramsey hunt syndrome most common nerve palsy facial nerve palsy 2220 a patient who was started on anti convulsant medications now presents with the below given rash Okay, he gives history that when he stops taking the drug, the rash fades away. What is the diagnosis? It is a case of fixed drug eruption. There are specific drugs, mostly the anti-convulsant or the anti-epileptic drugs, or some antibiotics like sulfonamides. These are known to cause fixed drug eruption. They will cause rashes. But when the patient will stop taking the rash, the rash will fade away. But if the patient starts taking the rash, uh, but the patient starts taking the drug again the rash will appear again at the same site that is a characteristic feature of fixed drug eruption ye bahut commonly repeated question hai exam ka and a lot of people pata nahi bade bade disease mark karte no it is a case of fixed drug eruption that's it theek hai no issues with this so this is a case of fixed drug eruption as you can see when there is less than 10% of skin loss of epidermal loss that is known as Steven Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal like uh, necrolysis, may more than 30% of skin loss, 10 to 30 overlap of both. ठीक है? This is Staphylococcus candidate skin syndrome. What is this? This is known as weal. That is seen in a condition known as urticaria. There can be multiple causes of urticaria: heat, cold, solar, cholinergic, multiple causes. ठीक है? And it will fade on its own self limiting condition hoti hai kuch nahi karna padta theek hai this is diarrhea sign diarrhea sign is seen in urticaria pigmentosa urticaria and urticaria pigmentosa dono alag alag diseases hai please remember diarrhea sign is a feature of urticaria
pigmentosa, which is also known as mastocytosis. Why? Because if we strike the lesion, what is going to happen? The mast cells will degranulate, releasing a lot of histamine, and that will cause vasodilation, leading to that redness known as Darrier's sign. Okay, so that's important. No issues with this. Angioedema, side effect of which drug? Is inhibitors. A patient comes to Suraksha clinic with complaints of lower abdominal pain, dysmenorrhea, that is painful, menses, and there is fever. She gives history of vaginal discharge and per abdominal examination reveals tenderness. Which among following color-coded kit will be used for treatment? So now, important is she is having lower abdominal pain. Okay, that is a uh, feature of pelvic inflammatory disease. Second, she is having vaginal discharge. That is suggestive of vaginal Nitis. If I talk about Suraksha Clinic, it will provide which kind of services? STI or RTI services. Syndromic or definitive management? Only syndromic management based on these STD color-coded kits. Kitne hote hai saath? Kit 1 is gray color. Kit 2 is green color. Kit 3, 4 and 5, Reynolds phenomena. W, B, R. That is white, blue, red. Kit 6, yellow. Kit 7, black. Important is Kit 1, that is gray color kit, can be used for any type of discharge except vaginal discharge. For vaginal discharge, we use the green kit. So, urethral discharge, cervical discharge, anorectal discharge. It is always the gray kit. Vaginitis or vaginal discharge, that is bacterial vaginosis, trichomoniasis and candidiasis. We will use the kit number 2, the green kit. Kit 3 and 4, both are used for non-herpetic genital ulcer. Okay, kit 5 is for... Herpetic genital ulcer. Kit 6 is for lower abdominal pain, which is a feature of pelvic inflammatory disease, PID. And kit 7 is for inguinal bubos. Important, yaha patient mein lower abdominal pain bhi hai aur vaginal discharge bhi hai. So, important is vaginal discharge can be a feature of PID as well. Therefore, it should be the kit number 6, that is a yellow kit. Question number 222. A patient comes with the below given lesion. Which among the following is an incorrect statement about the following condition? What is the below given lesion? Kaisa dikh hai? Plain, sorry, plain top, polygonal, purplish, papule. Seen in cases of lichen planus. So it is a case of lichen planus. Option A says histopathology reveals parakeratosis. We have seen parakeratosis is a feature of psoriasis, not a feature of lichen planus. Okay, Wickham's trier seen in buccal mucosa. Yes, the oral reticulate rashes, which can be seen on skin or the oral mucosa, known as Wickham's triae. Okay? Next, basal cell degeneration and sawtooth retiridges. I've told you, psoriasis mein which type of retiridges? Elongated retiridges. And lichen planus mein sawtooth retiridges along with basal cell degeneration. And that basal cell degeneration leads to a space known as Max Joseph space or the Max Joseph cleft. Okay? Along with that, there is hypergranulosis or hyperkeratosis that is thickening of stratum spinosum as well as thickening of stratum granulosum as well as thickening of stratum corneum. Thickening of the skin. Ki. Along with that characteristic bodies, kya bolte in colloidal bodies ko? See, weight bodies will be seen. Teregium is a classical nail feature. True. Teregium is a wing shape fold in the nails. That is a classical feature of lichen. Planus. Answer should be option number A. That is a wrong statement. No issues with this. These are voilacious papule you can see. Question number 223. A child presents to the OPD with the lesion as given in the image and also had a complaint of sore throat recently. Most common organism implicated in this condition is. This is a case of. This is a case of impetigo. Impetigo can be of two types. It can be a bullous impetigo or a non-bullous impetigo. Most common cause of bullous impetigo is. Staph. Or yes, and most common cause of non bullous impetigo is strep pyogenes, that is group A beta hemolytic streptococci. This same organism is also the most common cause of pharyngitis or tonsillitis. So, but chem is sore throat ki bhi history hai. And now, which kind of lesion is there? Bullous or non bullous? Bullous dikh raha hai kya? Nahin, it is non bullous. Konsa colored ka crust? Honey colored crust is seen na? So, it is a case of non bullous impetigo. So that's the reason why it can be a case of streptococcus pyogenes infection. Question number 224. 
a 35 year old married female presents with vaginal discharge and the below given growth which kind of growth cauliflower like growth is seen theek hai it is known as condyloma condyloma acuminata that is nothing but anogenital warts due to hpv 6 and 11 but on microscopic examination a typical malignant cells are seen agar malignant cells dikh rahe so it is no more a wart it is a case of cancer and as it is a case of cancer the likely cause of about diagnosis will be hpv 18 this was a recent epg question don't make a mistake jab unhone a typical ya malignant cells diya hai answer should be 16 or 18 it cannot be 6 or 11 anymore 225 a 24 year old man had multiple small hypopigmented macules okay on the upper chest and the back for the last 3 months the macules were circular arranged around follicles and may coalesce to form large sheets the surface of macule shows fine scaling scaling ka matlab pityriasis theek hai he had similar lesion one year ago which subsided with treatment the most appropriate investigation to confirm diagnosis pehle kya lag raha hai what is the likely diagnosis pityriasis versi color also known as tinea versi color causes malassezia furfur or malassezia globosa hyperpigmented or hypopigmented macules mainly on the trunk with scaling characteristic feature as it is a fungus tinea so the investigation can be a koh or a potassium hydroxide mount or a examination zank smear is usually done in two condition jab tumhe aise type ke cells dikhenge known as zank cells zank smear is done for herpes simplex virus infection and second for pemphigus measles mein karte hai but measles mein characteristic nahi hai so these are two characteristic condition where it is done okay so herpes simplex virus and pemphigus pemphigus mein these zank cells which are seen these are acantholytic cells due to damage of the desmosome theek hai ha question number aur kya dete ho is patient mein pityriasis versicolor sorry ियर ओल्ड मेल प्रेजेंट विदीजन इन एस टू दैट इज डबल्ड इन साइज मतलब रेपिडली ग्रोइंग रीजन इन दास्ट इयर इट इज नॉन टेंडर मतलब पेनलेस एंड डज नॉट ब्लीड बट इज वाइफ सीज इट्स गेटिंग बिगर एंड बिगर इन साइज ठीक है एंड डार्कर ऑन वन साइड एज वेल ऑन एग्जामिनेशन द मैक्यूल इज सेवन एम एम इन डायमीटर विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज बेस्ट नेक्स्ट स्टेप वॉट आर यू सस्पेक्टिंग वेरी गुड इट इज अ केस ऑफ स्किन कैंसर राधर द मोस्ट मैलेग्नेंट स्किन कैंसर दैट्स द रीजन वाई वी हैव टू गो फॉर एक्सीजनल पेशेंट मेलानोमा के कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ए बी सी टी ए फॉर द रीजन विल बी सिमेट्रिकल और एसिमेट्रिकल ए सिमेट्रिकल बी फॉर बॉर्डर रेगुलर और इरेगुलर irregular border c for color dark or light dark color brown or black d for diameter diameter will be very large and e for evolving matlab it will keep on growing in size rapidly okay these are nevus the nevus which is white or pale in color that is called as nevus anemicus this is called as halo or the sudden nevus which is pre malignant important it is pre malignant lesion this is the nevus of ota and on shoulder if we see that is called as nevus of e2 these are the mongolian spots seen in a newborn baby what is the treatment no treatment it will subside by one year of age and this is the becker's nevus when we can see hairs also on the shoulder question number 227 a 30 year old lady presented with flaccid bullae on her skin which are easy to rupture flaccid bullae young patient easy to rupture crushed on drawing along with oral mucosal lesions ओके वो बायोप्सी रिवील्ड सुपरा बेजल स्प्लिट इम्यूनोफ्लोरोसेंस शोस बिलो गिवन डिपॉजिट्स व्हाट इज द डायग्नोसिस सो इट इज अ केस ऑफ पेम्फिगस ये समझ में आया हाउ हैव यू रूल्ड आउट बुलस पेम्फिगोइड व्हाई बिकॉज़ द पेशेंट इज नॉट 
elderly. Second, it is not tense bullae. Third, it, it is easily ruptured, which is not seen in bullous pemphigoid. Please remember. And oral mucosal lesions are not seen in cases of bullous pemphigoid. Please remember that. Okay? Usually, bullous pemphigoid is intraepidermal or subepidermal? Subepidermal. But they are talking about an intraepidermal lesion over here. So, it can be a case of pemphigus. Now, two types of pemphigus are given in the option. Pemphigus foliaceous and pemphigus vulgaris. Which one is more common? Definitely, vulgaris is more common. Important is how to differentiate supra basal split. There are how many legs in epidermis? Stratum basal, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, stratum corneum. Important, here is stratum basal ke upar lesion. Hai. So, it is a pemphigus vulgaris. If stratum corneum ke niche, subcorneal split, bolte hai, then it would have been a pemphigus foliaceous. So, here it is a case of pemphigus vulgaris. Antibodies in pemphigus vulgaris are formed against desmoglein 3, followed by desmoglein 1. But in foliaceous, they are more commonly formed against desmoglein 1. Okay, and which appearance on immunofluorescence is seen? Fish net appearance due to deposition of antibodies usually. Okay, no issues with this. This is what is erythema multiforme. No blisters or no blebs are seen. Okay, these are just target lesions which are seen in erythema multiforme. It is a marker of malignancy. Yes, it is an external marker of malignancy. Acanthosis nigricans is also a marker of malignancy. Okay, Harbar nahi. Acanthosis nigricans obesity ke wajah se ho sakta hai. So, agar koi bichara kese mein hai, so don't tell him nahi tujhe cancer kari. So, directly hamad bol dena. Please remember, they can be a marker of malignancy. So, acanthosis nigricans as you can see over here. It is blackish, velvety appearance of skin seen in the nape of the neck or mainly in the axilla. It is a marker of obesity. It is a marker of metabolic syndrome. It is a marker of insulin resistance. It is seen in PCOD and it is also a marker of malignancy. Okay? Question number 228. A child has been brought with complaints of runny nose, that is coryza, low grade fever and erythematous rosh as seen below. What is this appearance? It is nothing but the slab cheek appearance. What is the likely diagnosis? It is definitely erythema infectiosum, also known as which disease? Fifth disease. Causative agent is parvovirus B19. Roseola infantum, also known as exanthum subitum. It is called as human herpes virus 6 or 7. Okay? Scarlet and Kawasaki. Kawasaki, may have the most important feature is what? Fever. How many days of fever? More than 5 days of fever along with cream features. C goes for conjunctivitis. R goes for rash. E goes for edema. A goes for lymph adenopathy. M goes for mucosal involvement that is strawberry tongue. Okay? Important to differentiate because strawberry tongue is also seen in scarlet fever. Fever does not respond to antipyretics or paracetamol in Kawasaki. It responds to antipyretics in scarlet fever. Painless lymphadenopathy is seen in Kawasaki disease, but a painful or a tender adenopathy is seen in scarlet fever. Important, in Kawasaki disease, the lymphadenopathy is unilateral or bilateral? Unilateral or bilateral? It is unilateral, but in scarlet it is bilateral. Next important, there is a non-specific rash. Kya sabi type ka rash ho sakta in Kawasaki? But in a case of scarlet fever, there is a rash which blanches. Press karo ge to white pad jayega. Okay, along with that important, pastia lines are seen on the rash. Pastia lines are seen. Okay? No issues with this. Important. Iske alawa yaad rakh lena ki when the rash is having a sandpaper consistency, that is a feature of scarlet fever usually. Okay? So at least remember this. Kawasaki disease mein most common cause of death is myocardial infarction. Very good. It can also lead to aneurysm in the child. Most common cause of MI in child is Kawasaki disease. 229, 35-year-old patient presents with complaints of hair fall, that is alopecia. On examination, multiple broken hair shafts were seen and his HPE reveals perifollicular infiltrate. Matlab hair follicle ke aspas, lymphocyte jamai. That is called as which appearance anybody? Swarm of bees appearance. That swarm of bees appearance along with multiple broken hair shafts. Kuch chote hair shafts. What is the diagnosis? It is a case of alopecia areata. Important is, in alopecia areata, wherever there is hair loss in a specific area, you cannot see any other hair. 
there will be graying of hair which will be a feature there will be swarm of bees appearance on the histopathology in that particular area there will not be even a single hair but in other conditions when it is a case of for example trichotillomania you can see some hairs in the uh, area of or the patch itself theek hai but yahan pe koi nahi hoga us patch mein ek hair nahi milega tumhe graying of hair will be there okay multiple shafts known as exclamation mark and hp showing form of bees appearance that is a classical feature if i say a patient or is having a chronic disease or a chronic illness for example covid 19 after which she started suffering hair fall that is the case of very good that is the case of telogen effluvium when the hair in the telogen phase falls out after a chronic illness okay if i say the patient was having radiotherapy chemotherapy after which she has lost her hair anagen effluvium after chemo radiotherapy the patient loses hair that is an example of anagen effluvium young female pulling out her hair and eating that trichotillomania no issues with this anybody androgenic alopecia is a specific pattern of alopecia okay male pattern baldness or the female pattern baldness no issues with this 230 A 40-year-old man is completely normal in his office with his friends, but whenever he looks at his wife, he feels that she cheating on him. Every day, he accuses her that she has a boyfriend too, and they often fight. This condition can be described as it is known as Othello syndrome, also known as pathological jealousy or morbid jealousy. Please remember, okay? No issues with this, anybody. So please remember. If you are doing it, then don't do it. Don't do it. No issues with this. Important is what is Cotard syndrome? It is delusion of negation, also known as nihilistic delusions. It is a classical feature seen in depression. It is a classical feature of depression. Bobbitt syndrome is when the male genitalia is cut out to achieve sexual gratification. That is known as Bobbitt syndrome. De Clerambault syndrome is. Yes, delusion of love, also known as erotomania. ठीक है, कटरीना के मेरे से प्यार करती है, ठीक है? तो अगर ऐसा लग रहा हो, तो definitely you are suffering from D. Clairembault syndrome. No issues with this, anybody? If patient, if the patient is recognizing a stranger, if the patient is recognizing the stranger as a familial person, and he says you can change multiple appearances, that is a case of Fregoli syndrome. But if the patient is denying to identify his own family members, That is a case of Capgras syndrome. ठीक है? Two thirty one. A twenty three year old lady delivered a child by normal vaginal delivery and has after five days is brought to the casualty by her husband. He reported that she has been crying all the night. Also complains of loss of appetite, difficulty in sleeping. That is insomnia and feeling low. General physical examination is unremarkable. कोई दिक्कत और नहीं है पेशेंट को. And no significant pelvic findings also, which is the best term to describe a condition. So important after delivery or in the postpartum period, there can be three psychiatric condition. One is called as postpartum blues. Second is postpartum depression, and third is postpartum psychosis. Postpartum blues usually are the most common ones out of them. They will occur usually two weeks in the first two weeks of postpartum. In the first two weeks of postpartum. and they can occur usually after 2 to 3 days itself pehle do hafte mein agar ho raha hai that is more likely to be a case of postpartum blues itself your the patient will having will be having mild symptoms like irritability there will be anxiety fluctuating mood and increased emotional reactivity theek hai here the patient does not need any kind of treatment it will subside or spontaneously remit important is postpartum depression it is usually seen in the first year of postpartum कब दिखता है मेनली आफ्टर टू टू थ्री मंथ्स यूजुअली इट इज कॉमनली सीन आफ्टर टू टू थ्री मंथ्स एंड हियर द पेशेंट विल हैव ऑल द सिम्टम्स ऑफ डिप्रेशन द नेगेटिव सिम्टम्स लाइक अपोलॉजी ओके अलोजिया अनहेडोनिया ऑल ऑफ दीज सिम्टम्स विल बी सीन ओके इन केस ऑफ पोस्ट पार्ट डिप्रेशन हियर द पेशेंट रिक्वायर अ डेफिनेटली लास्ट इज पोस्ट पार्टम साइकोसिस इट इज वेरी रेयर इट इज सीन इन वेरी रेयर कंडीशन But it commonly occurs in the first three months of postpartum. समझ रहे हो? After three months is depression. Within first three months is usually postpartum psychosis, and it usually occurs after two to three weeks. पहले दो हफ्ते में पहले दो हफ्ता blues. दो से तीन हफ्ते के बाद अंतिम महीने से पहले psychosis. तीन महीने के बाद depression. 
that's how easy it is here the patient can have depressive symptoms as well as maniac symptoms also okay that is the case of psychosis here it is the most severe form and the patient needs hospitalization apne patient mein kab hua hai usually after 5 days itself in the first 2 weeks after postpartum so it should be a case of postpartum use 232 a 16 year old girl is brought to the opd with complaints of eating excessive food in a short duration of time that is called as binge eating followed by taking emetics that is or the emetics or laxatives for getting rid of the food on further evaluation russell sign is seen russell sign is injury to the knuckles known as callosity knuckles okay with normal menses and the bmi is 19.5 what is a normal bmi 18.5 to 22.9 so the female is having a normal bmi or a normal weight what is the most likely diagnosis it is a case of bulimia nervosa as if they have mentioned that the patient is having a low weight or a low bmi along with some endocrinal disturbances then your diagnosis would have been anorexia nervosa reason is 50% cases of anorexia nervosa can present with binge eating purging type as well 50% are restrictive theek hai apan india wala follow karte hain usko theek hai question number 233 A 40-year-old chronic alcoholic and smoker presents to the OPD with complaints of yellow discoloration of urine and concludes that he is suffering from cirrhosis and requests investigation. Further clinical investigations were completely normal. Okay, he has been to several physicians in the past too. Which of the following best describes his diagnosis? So important is if the patient is experiencing symptoms. ये टेबल बहुत इजी है सब कुछ याद रह जाएगा इफ द पेशेंट इज हैविंग एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ सम सिम्टम्स इफ दे आर वॉलेंट्री सिम्टम्स वॉलेंट्री का मतलब खुद प्रोड्यूस कर रहा है ओके वॉलेंट्री सिम्टम्स सो द पेशेंट इज प्रोड्यूसिंग द सिम्टम्स ऑन हिज होन एंड व्हाई ही इज प्रोड्यूसिंग द सिम्टम बिकॉज़ ही वांट्स अ सिक रोल दैट मींस बिकॉज़ ही वांट्स सम मेडिकल अटेंशन दैट इज नथिंग बट द फैक्टिशियस डिसऑर्डर कल ही बोला था क्या बोलते हैं सिंड्रोम को मनचाउसन सिंड्रोम प्लीज रिमेंबर बट व्हेन the patient does not want to get medical attention but rather he wants to get some benefit he wants to have some secondary gain matlab usko saza se bachna hai then it is called as malingering usually seen in prisoners theek hai next important if the patient is having involuntary experience of symptoms iska matlab ye symptoms uske control mein nahi hai he is not able to control so involuntary experience of symptoms you need to see if he is having the physical symptoms like wo bolta hai headache hai abdominal pain hai haath mein dard hai is a physical symptom if he is preoccupied with the idea of having these physical symptom then the diagnosis should be somatic symptom disorder then the diagnosis should be somatic symptom disorder but if they say that the patient is preoccupied with symptoms or illness to be specific when the patient is preoccupied with an illness he is not saying i am having abdominal pain he is saying i am having cirrhosis in that condition the patient is preoccupied with an idea of having a illness अगर वो इलनेस की आइडिया के साथ आता है तुम्हारे पास देन डेफिनेटली इट इज अ केस ऑफ इलनेस एंजाइटी डिसऑर्डर प्रीवियस नेम फॉर इलनेस एंजाइटी डिसऑर्डर वाज हाइपोकॉन्ड्रियासिस इटसेल्फ ठीक है नो इश्यूज विद दिस एंड इफ इट इज प्री ऑक्युपाइड विद न्यूरोलॉजिकल सिम्टम देन इट इज अ केस ऑफ कन्वर्जन नो इश्यूज विद दिस वेरी इजी एक दो बार चार्ट फॉलो करो इजी हो जाएगा बिकॉज़ दीस आर कंफ्यूज कंडीशन आई टेल यू इससे बेहतर चार्ट मुझे नहीं मिला आज तक आई हैव सीन दिस वेरी इजी ठीक है so as the patient over here is you are having cirrhosis usko cirrhosis hai kya nahi ek bar uski urine yellow aa gayi iski wajah se usko kya lagta hai ki he is suffering from cirrhosis it is the patient is preoccupied with the idea of having symptoms or illness illness cirrhosis bol raha hai na wo directly so it is illness theek hai so therefore it is a case of illness anxiety disorder also known as hypochondriasis theek hai Question number two thirty four. A twenty two year old female who is a known case of generalized anxiety disorder presented to the emergency room with complaints of sudden onset apprehension and there is uncomfortable feeling of impending doom. The preferred drug for the treatment in emergency is provisional diagnosis. Very good. A patient of generalized anxiety disorder has a sudden severe anxiety. Okay, in which she is having a feeling of impending doom. Ma'am, कभी भी मर सकती हूँ. that is a case of panic attack known case of gad having panic attack now okay the preferred drug for the treatment in emergency will be 
to definitely settle her down we need to give benzodiazepines for any anxiety disorder short term treatment benzodiazepines long term treatment ssris so here it should be alprazolam question number 235 a patient with persecutory delusions that means delusion of persecution somebody is going to harm me or kill me okay and third person auditory hallucination diagnosed with schizophrenia was started on resperidone resperidone is typical antipsychotic or atypical atypical antipsychotics okay and after the last night dose today he presented with his eyes rolling upwards for few hours next step in management what is the complication that is suffered from resperidone so now there are two types of antipsychotics jaldi se first generation and second generation first generation are typical antipsychotic second generation are atypical typical unko bolte hai which primary blocks the d2 receptor atypical are the ones which primarily block the 5h2 receptors okay examples of typical will be haloperidol chlorpromazine lufenazine okay, all of these are definitely the typical antipsychotics atypical most important will be clozapine others can be olanzapine aripiprazole quetiapin all of them and important is risperidone theek okay? hai now important is first generation antipsychotics as they block the d2 receptors they will cause dopamine deficiency due to that they will lead to extra pyramidal symptoms the most common extra pyramidal symptom is acute agathisia most earliest sabse pehle develop hoga wo acute dystonia that is sudden spasm of a group of muscle then drug induced parkinsonism or pseudo parkinsonism and tardive dyskinesia which is a long term side effect theek okay? hai whereas second generation antipsychotics they can cause extra pyramidal side effect but very 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 less likely unme se sabse zyada risk kiske sath hogi resperidone among the atypical antipsychotics if we say there is highest risk of extra pyramidal side effect with which one then answer should be resperidone yahan patient mein resperidone hi diya gaya okay important is metabolic abnormalities will be common with atypical antipsychotics so extra pyramidal side effects with typical or endocrine side effects with atypical metabolic side effects kya ho sakte hai weight gain hyperlipidemia hyperglycemia these are the side effects okay maximum weight gain and maximum sedation among atypical antipsychotics is seen with previous year question hai maximum weight gain and maximum sedation neend aati hai na very good it is seen with clozapine itself clozapine is the drug of choice for treatment resistant schizophrenia when two group of drug fails then clozapine has to be given to the patient clozapine can lead to lethal or dangerous side effects like seizures myocarditis and agranulocytosis chalo to is patient mein kya lag raha hai tumhe there is a sudden spasm of group of muscles usually so it is a case of acute within few hours if the patient is developing that means it is the earliest extra pyramidal side effect and it is due to a sudden spasm of group of muscles known as acute dystonia there is spasm of which muscle extraocular group of muscles therefore is having uprolling of the eyeball samajh gaye so now therefore what should be the drug of choice for acute dystonia it should be promethazine waise the drug of choice is benzexol or trihexyphenidyl but as that is not over here in option therefore injection Promethazine should be given to the patient. No issues with this, anybody. So you can uh, refer to this chart as well. Ah. Usually, it depends on the severity of the patient. Atypical are more safer. Therefore, we try to start with safer. That is atypical antipsychotic. But if the patient is having more psychotic symptoms, then it's better to start with typical antipsychotic. Okay, the side effects can be managed. No issues with this. Because side effects, every patient may not have. That's important. earliest side effect is acute dystonia most common side effect is acute agathisia drug of choice for dystonia is benz hexol drug of choice for agathisia is propanolol benz hexol can be given as well propanolol is also given theek okay? hai drug induced parkinsonism again it is benz hexol neuroleptic malignant syndrome dantrolin just like malignant hyperthermia tardive dyskinesia val bena then question number 236 a patient was brought to the opd with complaints of recurrent episodes of palpitations sweating and dyspnea along with insomnia when he experiences symptoms 
the patient also gets a feeling of impending doom. What is the likely diagnosis? Panic attack or parent disorder. Feeling of impending doom is seen during panic attack. But recurrent panic attacks are called as? So, sorry, it should be array ruko. It should be a case of panic disorder. Please remember that. Okay, recurrent panic attacks are called as panic disorder. So, here the patient is having recurrent panic attacks. So, it should be a case of panic disorder. Please remember that. Short term benzodiazepines, long term SSRI. Same. Question number 237. A 50-year-old male comes with complaints of low backache along with history of lower urinary tract symptoms. Ultrasound reveals there is post-void residue of more than 100 ml. Okay, that means even after urination, there is a lot of urine which is taken inside the urinary bladder itself. It's not able to empty properly. Urine examination does not reveal significant proteinuria. What is the likely cause? Very good. It is a case of Metastatic prostate cancer. The reason is, it is usually seen in elderly patient. Second, I've told you, I've told you, low backache along with lower urinary tract symptoms. Elderly patient, low backache, multiple myeloma. Elderly patient, low backache with urinary symptoms. Metastatic prostate cancer. Okay, and post-world residue of more than 100 ml is the very important feature that it is a case of either BPH or it is a case of prostate cancer in the patient, definitely. Okay, multiple myeloma agar hota, then definitely there should have been protein urea. The light chain of antibodies should have been excreted out, known as which proteins? Benz, Jones proteins. Which are the, what are the features other than that? We can see flame cells. Then we can see intranuclear, sorry, intranuclear inclusion bodies, known as Dutcher bodies. And some intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies, known as Russell bodies. With these are known as grape cells or grape-like inclusion seen in mod cells. Very important feature of multiple myeloma. Okay? Then ankylosing spondylitis presents with low backache but in a young male. Please remember that. Okay, Ankylosing spondylitis may the most characteristic feature is bilateral sacroiliitis. The most characteristic feature is bilateral sacroiliitis. In later stages or in few patients, we can see bamboo spine. Along with that, calcification of this ligament leading to dagger sign. Calcification of the interspinous ligament causes dagger sign. And calcification of all the ligaments leads to a tram track sign or a trolley track sign. It is actually B27 associated condition, commonly seen with anterior uveitis as well. Important. Drug of choice are and seeds. If they do not respond, then we will go for infliximab. No issues with this. Please remember, this is a case of metastatic prostate cancer. Which type of metastasis is seen? Osteoblastic or osteoclastic? Osteoblastic. Rather, the most common cause of osteoblastic metastasis in body is prostate cancer. Screening test is serum PSA plus TRE. Investigation of choices. Trust guided biopsy. Translectal ultrasound guided biopsy. Most common site is peripheral zone and the posterior lobe. Metastatic prostate cancer is advanced case. Only palliative care could be given. No radical prostatectomy. 238, a patient with only low back, a urinary symptoms and diagnostic criteria more than 10% plasma cells in bone marrow biopsy. Second feature. Characteristic feature near second M peak or a church spire appearance on urine or serum electrophoresis and any one of the craft features hypercalcemia, renal failure, anemia, and bony lytic lesions. Okay, question number 238 a patient with normal menstrual cycles and now presents with amenorrhea with vaginal bleeding and abdominal pain. Beta SCG is 1400 international unit. BP of the patient is normal. Ultrasound reveals trilaminar appearance in the uterus. Trilaminar appearance in the uterus is suggestive of pregnancy. What is the next step in management? What are you suspecting? Very good. As you can see, ultrasound is not showing any sac. It is only a trilaminar appearance. So it is definitely a case of ectopic pregnancy because trilaminar appearance on ultrasound along with increased beta SCG levels along with a menu. So, that is a classical case of ectopic pregnancy. 
Now for ectopic pregnancy, what is the next step to be done? Beta SCG after 48 hours. It will be doubled. So please remember, if beta SCG are doubled after 48 hours, that is the case of intrauterine pregnancy. If beta SCG doubles after 5 to 7 days, that is the case of ectopic pregnancy. Question number 239. क्यों कोई भी वजानल ब्लीडिंग का पेशेंट आएगा तो एक्सप्लोरेटरी लैब करेगा पीआईडी के पेशेंट में भी वजानल ब्लीडिंग होती है अल्ट्रासाउंड किया ना अल्ट्रासाउंड पे दिखता ना कोई कलेक्शन अगर रप्चर्ड होता अल्ट्रासाउंड पे रप्चर दिखता मास दिखता कलेक्शन दिखता हैव यू सीन एनीथिंग नो क्वेश्चन नंबर 239 एन इंटर्न वाज आस्क्ड टू डिलीवर द प्लेसेंटा फॉर व्हिच ही गिव सडन ट्रैक्शन एंड द कॉर्ड ब्रोक leading to excessive vaginal bleeding which of the following is the most appropriate step sabse badnam prajati intern kya kiya jata hai bechara delivery kar raha tha but usko laga sada placenta aa hi nahi raha bahar mujhe aur bhi kaam hai to zor laga haisha usme kya ho gaya cord kya ho gaya break ab cord break ho gaya to placenta andar hi reh gaya and the patient started bleeding a lot now what should be the most appropriate step in management now the placenta is inside only. We have to give general anesthesia to the patient. Bhai, direct mat kar de na. Patient will die of neurogenic shock, I'm telling you. Please remember, give general anesthesia to the patient. Then you insert your hand and then definitely remove the placenta manually. So manual removal of placenta has to be done. Important is, arrange blood and perform Crete's method. Crete's method is uterine massage. Okay, vigorous uterine massage. That is absolutely contraindicated that is obsolete now because that causes retained bits of placenta and that leads to which type of pph primary or secondary secondary pph that's important no issues with this anybody uterine massage can be done but that is not the best management right you have to remove the placenta with hands iv oxytocin will not help we will give it but it will not help definitely pehle manual removal of placenta ke pehle give tocolytic and then remove it and then again give oxytocin if required 240, a 25-year-old primary gravida presents with lower abdominal pain and heavy bleeding per vagina. On palpation, tenderness is noted. BP is 90 by 60 millimeters of mercury and heart rate is 110 beats per minute. Okay, BP is low, heart rate is more. That means the patient is hemodynamically unstable, more likely to be in shock. UPT was performed. It was positive. That means the patient is pregnant and beta SCG levels are also high. They are around 1500 international units. Ultrasound perform shows no double decidual sac sign. Double decidual sac sign is a feature of intrauterine pregnancy. If that is not present, it cannot be an intrauterine pregnancy. But adnexal mass was noted. Adnexal means kya uterus ke bahar. So definitely it is a case of ectopic pregnancy in the patient. Okay? What will be the most appropriate step in management of this patient? Now important is the patient is in shock. So it is a case of ruptured or an unruptured ectopic pregnancy. It is a case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy. If I talk about ruptured ectopic pregnancy, what is the most appropriate step in management? Leave behind that. Mujhe pehle batao. Aray, pehle batao. First step in management kya hogi tumhari chalo. Basic resuscitation. A, B, C has to be taken care of. And then you will definitely take the patient to the OT and perform an exploratory laparotomy. Will you save the tube or will you remove the tube? If it is usually ruptured, so we have to remove the tube. So therefore, if we will go for laparotomy plus total salping gectomy in the patient. It is a case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy. If it is a case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy, but the patient is hemodynamically stable, then what should be done? Ruptured ectopic, but the patient is stable. Very good. Laparoscopic one. Okay, please remember. If the patient is hemodynamically stable, total salpingectomy has to be done, but only via laparoscopy because it is less invasive or minimally invasive. Okay, government may follow you on the private, they do that. Okay, no issues with this, anybody important. If it is a case of unruptured ectopic, guys, if it is a case of unruptured ectopic, definitely the patient will be hemodynamically stable. Now you need to see whether you need to manage it by medical management or surgical management three important factors first is the size of mass less than 3.5 to 4 centimeter second is 
बीटा एस सी जी लेवल कितना फाइव थाउजेंड इंटरनेशनल यूनिट एंड फोर थर्ड इज कार्डियक एक्टिविटी इफ द साइज इज लेस देन थ्री पॉइंट फाइव सेंटीमीटर यू कैन गो फॉर मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट द साइज इज मोर देन फोर सेंटीमीटर यू हैव टू गो फॉर सर्जिकल मैनेजमेंट बीटा एस सी जी लेवल लेस देन फाइव थाउजेंड इंटरनेशनल यूनिट यू विल गो फॉर मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट मोर देन फाइव थाउजेंड इंटरनेशनल यूनिट यू विल गो फॉर सर्जिकल मैनेजमेंट इफ कार्डियक एक्टिविटीज प्रेजेंट यू विल गो फॉर सर्जिकल मैनेजमेंट एबसेंट गो फॉर मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट बहुत कॉमन क्वेश्चन है क्राइटेरिया पे क्वेश्चन एफ एम जी में आ चुका है ठीक है तो क्राइटेरिया पूछा जा चुका है तो ये क्राइटेरिया रटा होना चाहिए मुझे बन इंपॉर्टेंट मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट में वॉट इज डन कैसे करते हो वेरी गुड वी विल गिव सिंगल डोज और मल्टीपल डोज ऑफ वी विल गिव सिंगल डोज ऑफ मेथो ट्रेक्सेट मल्टीपल डोज इंजेक्शन ऑफ मेथो ट्रेक्सेट इज गिवन एन यहाँ पे ऑब्जी की बात कर दी लो रिस्क कोरियो कार्सिनोमा हाई रिस्क कोरियो कार्सिनोमा में इट इज इमेको रेजीम प्लीज रिमेम्बर दैट ठीक है सर्जिकल मैनेजमेंट इज वॉट यू विल मेक अ कट यू विल रिमूव द मास्क एंड यू विल लीव द ट्यूब एज इट इज will not suture it back okay therefore it is called as linear salpingo tomi yes tomi tomi it is a linear salpingo tomi theek hai laparoscopic ya laparotomic laparoscopic na phaltu mein kyu open kar rahe ho patient stable hai question number 241 a 32 year old pregnant female at 34 weeks period of gestation presented to antenatal clinic with complaints of headache nausea fatigue and right abdominal discomfort Lab investigations reveals anemia, thrombocytopenia, and LFT reveals there is elevated ALT and LDH, lactate dehydrogenase. Definitive management. Diagnosis one more time. Shabash. It is a case of HELP syndrome. Okay. HELP syndrome is what? H goes for hemolysis that causes anemia. EL goes for elevated liver enzymes. Can you see elevated ALT and LDH? And LP goes for low platelet count. That is, so pinia. Two conditions which are a indication of immediate termination of pregnancy. One is HELP syndrome, and second is eclampsia. In both these condition, we have to go for immediate termination of pregnancy. So, what is the definitive management? Immediate termination of pregnancy. Next step in management. Bola hota to basic re. Suscitation would have been your answer. Please remember that. Okay. Two forty-two. A pregnant female presented to emergency with complaints of abdominal pain, vaginal bleeding. On examination, cervical os os was open. Products of conception were bulging out from the os, and fundal height was equal or corresponding to that of the gestational age. What is the likely diagnosis? So, jaldi se fat se. Now, if we need to see three important things: cervical os, second. Prolapse of the fetus or prolapse of products of conception and uterine size. Okay. Important is in cases of threatened abortion, the cervical os will be closed. Prolapse will be there or what? No prolapse will be there. Uterine size equal to the period of gestation. Inevitable abortion. मतलब होगा ही होगा कुछ भी कर लो. Here the cervical os will be open. The pro prolapse तो नहीं होगा but the products will be bulging out and uterine size will be equal to क्योंकि अब तक लॉस तो नहीं हुआ है ना ओनली इट इज इक्वल टू दीरियड ऑफ जेस्टेशन मतलब अगर उसकी चौतीस हफ्ते की प्रेगनेंसी है थर्टी फोर वीक्स देन द साइज विल बी समेर अराउंड ट्वेंटी एट ट्वेंटी सिक्स वीक्स ओनली ठीक है नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कंप्लीट अबॉर्शन The os will be closed. There would been have been history of prolapse of con products of conception, and the size is equal to the non-pregnant uterus. Okay, that is important. So here definitely the cervical os is open. So either of this, then products of conception are bulging out. This is your diagnosis, and equal to the period of gestation. In evitable abortion. Two forty-three. A pregnant female presented to LR with complaints of headache, blurring of vision, nausea, and vomiting. Her blood pressure recording was one seventy by hundred ml mm of Hg. She gives history of decreased urine output. That is, oliguria. Urine dipstick shows two plus proteinuria. She was admitted and immediately she started convulsing. The next best step in management is provisional diagnosis. 
इट इज अस ऑफ एक्सिया ओके नाउ वाई एक्सिया बिकॉज अगर Please remember, if they would have said only the blood pressure is high, 170 by 100, more than 160 by 110 blood pressure, I would have said it is a case of gestational hypertension. If they say along with high BP there is also proteinuria, then I would have said it is a case of preeclampsia or a preeclamptic toxemia. But along with high BP proteinuria, they will say there are signs like end organ damage, headache, blurring of vision, epigastric pain, nausea and vomiting, decreased urine output. These are signs of end organ damage. Then I would have said it is a case of imminent eclampsia. मतलब कभी भी eclampsia हो सकता है. But as soon as they mention GTCS convulsions, my diagnosis becomes eclampsia. ठीक है? So now she has progressed immediately from pre-eclampsia into eclampsia. Now important is what is the drug of choice for eclampsia? MgSO4. Which regime? Pritchard's regime. IV plus IM regime. What is the treatment or management of choice now? She is convulsing. अगर तुमने उसका airway manage नहीं किया, she'll go into aspiration and she'll die of respiratory arrest. Basic है. कभी भी कोई patient convulse कर रहा हो, you have to take care of his airway. Any case मैंने क्या बोला था? Now obstetrics is not definitive management बताओ. ये previous या FMG के questions से तुम्हारे. ये obstetrics वैसे आती ही नहीं है जब तुम बोलोगे कि definitive management बताऊँगा. कभी नहीं आती है obstetrics वैसे. इतनी अच्छी कर लो कि तुम्हें पता हो नेक्स्ट स्टेप क्या है मैनेजमेंट का लॉजिकली जाओ ना पेशेंट कन्वर्स कर रहे तुम उसको आईवी मैग्नीशियम सल्फेट देके करोगे क्या बताओ कन्वर्जन स्टॉप होंगे बट उसके पहले वो मरा तो रेस्पिरेटरी अरेस्ट मैग्नीशियम सल्फेट चमत कर रही थोड़ी दो, दो सेकंड में काम कर जाएगा एबीसी ना बेसिक रिसन एयर वे ब्रीदिंग सर्कुलेशन कभी भी कोई पेशेंट ब्लीडिंग के साथ आता है कन्वर्जेंस के साथ आता है फर्स्ट स्टेप इज ऑलवेज बेसिक रिसेशन तो एयर वे ब्रीदिंग एंड सर्कुलेशन हैज टू बी मैनेज देन द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस इफ दे आस्क यू देन द आंसर शुड बी आईवी मैग्नीशियम आईवी प्लस आई एम मैग्नीशियम सल्फेट एंड द डेफिनेटिव मैनेजमेंट फॉर एक्लामशा इज इमीजियट टर्मिनेशन ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी ठीक है ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर हाइपर और हाइपरटेंसिव क्राइसिस इन प्रेगनेंसी इज लेबिटोलॉल दैट विल ऑल्सो बी गिवन बट अगेन दैट इज नॉट द नेक्स्ट बेस्ट स्टेप टू a 35 year old woman with dysmenorrhea that is painful menses and menorrhagia that is excessive bleeding during menses of 6 months duration showed an enlarged uterus of 20 weeks which was tender possible diagnosis is test and discussion mein kon kon tha test and discussion mein kon kon tha diagnosis kya hai chabas इंपॉर्टेंट क्यू डायग्नोसिस सेकेंड बनाया शाबाश शाबाश हाँ तुम्हारे क्यों किया तुमने अच्छा फिर ठीक है तो इंपॉर्टेंट है पेरीमिनोपोजल फीमेल प्लीज रिमेम्बर पेरीमिनोपोजल फीमेल विथ एनलार्जमेंट ऑफ यूट्रस देर कैन बी टू रीजन फॉर इट वन कैन बी अडीनो मायोसिस सेकेंड कैन बी फाइब्रॉइड फाइब्रॉइड ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज लियो मायोमा Important is the both are seen in perimenopausal or postmenopausal females around 35, 40, 45 years of age group. Both can present with dysmenorrhea, enlargement of uterus. Important is differentiate. कैसे करना है बच्चों? Enlargement of uterus. Adenomyosis is what? Presence of ectopic endometrium. Normally endometriosis is ectopic endometrium, but outside the uterus. Most common site being ovaries. Second most common fallopian tube. Oh, sorry, pouch of Douglas. That is endometriosis. But When the endometrium is present within the myometrium, that is what is called as adenomyosis. So uterus may be, but where is it? Myometrium may be. Her mahine bleed karega? Yes. Due to that, there is a lot of blood collection in the uterus, and therefore the size of the uterus increases. Uniform enlargement or non-uniform? So that is important. In adenomyosis, there is a uniform enlargement of the uterus. Fibroid is a tumor. It will only occur in some part. Non of the uterus agar ye difference nahi diya second important adenomyosis can never 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 be more than 14 weeks size it is always less than 14 weeks of gestation if it is more than 14 weeks of gestation it has to be fibroid fibroid can be less than 14 weeks agar chhota tumor hai to it can be more than 14 weeks because it is tumor uske upar control hi nahi hai kitna bhi bad sakta hai kitne week ki size di hui hai 20 weeks can it be adenomyosis no Therefore, it has to be fibroid. You try in leo myoma. Please remember this. 
This is the case of fibroid or a uterine leomyoma. This is the classification which is used. Which is the most common type? It is four. That is intramural or interstitial. Important what is the management of choice for zero, one, two. But how can I do it? Hysteroscopic, kya? Myomectomy, theke? Hysteroscopic myomectomy has to be done. Removal of the tumor. If it is three, four, baki aage. Very good. Laparoscopic myomectomy. It should be laparoscopic myomectomy. No issues with this, anybody? Please remember, if it is an elderly female whose family is complete, then you can go for hysterectomy also. Theke? But young females, mein, this has to be followed. This is the case of adenomyosis. Can you see the uniformly enlarged uterus and ultrasound showing which sign? Once appearance. Venation blind appearance. Investigation of choice for fibroid. Transvaginal scan. Investigation of choice for adenomyosis. MRI. Shabha. Showing which, uh, what appearance? Ye to ultrasound pe dikta venation blind. MRI pe lakes of myometrial blood will be seen. Lakes of myometrial blood. Okay. And adenomyosis, the treatment is always and always hysterectomy. Now, a 61-year-old woman has recently been diagnosed with breast cancer. Pathology testing confirms that it is ER positive and oncology team plans to start an on aromatase inhibitor. If it is an ER PR positive breast cancer, if she is a premenopausal female, then the treatment of choice or hormonal therapy of choice will be Terms that is tamoxifen. But if she is a postmenopausal female, then the hormonal therapy of choice is aromatase inhibitors. Drugs like retrozol, anastrozol. Which of the following adverse effects you would warn the patient about before starting the medication? That is selective estrogen receptor modulators like tamoxifen. The most common side effect of them is hot flushes, but an adverse effect can be endometrial hyperplasia leading to endometrial cancer. But letrozol or aromatase inhibitors, here the most common side effect as they will cause estrogen deficiency, they will lead to osteoporosis. 246, a 16 year old girl with primary amenorrhea. Primary amenorrhea means menses never started. Okay, secondary sexual characteristics are well developed. Okay, on examination, there is a bluish bulging hymen. It is a case of imperforate hymen. What is the best management? It is a case of cruciate. We have to do a give cruciate and drain all the sorry, all the blood which has been collected. This patient is having menses or not having menses? Having menses, but the only blood is not able to come out. Therefore, if blood is not able to come out, it is called as hidden menses, also known as cryptomenorrhea. If that blood is collected in vagina, it is known as hematocolpos. If it is collected in uterus, it is known as hematometra. Okay, that's important. Question number 247. 54-year-old female patient with history of amenorrhea for the last 16 months. What should be the hormone levels identified in this patient? In 54-year-old patient, amenorrhea, that means she is a case of Mino pause. So usually after menopause, what happens to the ovaries? The ovaries become atrophied, shrunken. Okay. So atrophied ovaries say estrogen produce hoga kya? Nahi hoga. Progesterone produce hoga kya? Nahi hoga. So therefore, will there be any negative feedback? No. So as there is no negative feedback, there will be excess release of LH and FSH. So there will be increased LH as well as increased FSH. So jin logo ko lagta hai ki estrogen is a uh, stimulator for LH disease. Please remember, estrogen is not so LH disease is Why? Because this hormone is in your body, which is secreted in the hypothalamus. GNRH. GNRH is the work of LH, FSH, both of them. Estrogen is just peak LH peak. LH secretion is not. That's the basic. It only causes LH surge or LH peak. This is the case of the estrogen causes LH disease. No. Estrogen causes LH surge or LH peak. Normal baseline LH disease is by GNRH itself. No issues with this, anybody? Have you understood that? That's important. 248. Young female presents with postrolateral swelling on the vaginal wall. On examination, following finding is noted definitely. What is the treatment preferred? Diagnosis is it is a case of Bartholin's cyst. As, as there is no pain, uh, fever, swelling, 
redness i cannot call it bartholin's abscess as of now but it can progress to bartholin's abscess treatment is marsupialization that means give a incision drain all the fluid and then suture the margins on the side itself that is marsupialization to prevent recurrence okay 249 19 year old girl with primary amenorrhea normal secondary sexual characteristics on examination vagina was shallow and blind on poor rectal examination no uterus is felt that means internal genitalia is absent what is the investigation which can best confirm the diagnosis here so now if they would have asked which is the investigation to be done up definitely uterus is absent so i would like to check if uterus is really absent or not therefore i should have gone for ultrasound but they have asked not the best next best one they have asked the overall best one to confirm my diagnosis over here and therefore the investigation of choices carry o typing ye maine already padha hai i am just revising it jaldi se dekh lo ek bar this was taken in obsgyny test and discussion itself so primary amenorrhea that means the menses never started if a patient comes to you with this okay if she is please remember if she is less than 15 years of age you have to just do reassurance okay this is nothing but a matter of delayed puberty itself that's important okay but otherwise even after 15 or uh, completed 15 years of age she is not having menses that means it is a case of primary amenorrhea now and therefore you need to first do upt upt will come out to be negative secondary sexual characteristics you will check for what are the secondary sexual characteristic breast and pubic and axillary hair growth if the secondary sexual characteristics are present then you need to go and palpate the abdomen to check for any uterus that is your internal genitalia if the uterus is absent that means the internal genitalia are absent it is a case of mullerian urogenesis also known as meyer rokitansky kuster hauser syndrome but if the uterus or the internal genitalia are present then it cannot be mullerian urogenesis it has to be some cannulation defect that means there is some problem some cannulation defect in the genitalia what it can be it can be either a case of imperforate hymen bluish bulging hymen dikh sakta hai usme ya fir it can be a case of transverse vaginal septum or there is narrowing or blockage of your cervix known as cervical stenosis okay next important if the secondary sexual characteristics are absent that means important if both of them are absent you need to further check for lh and fsh levels if the lh and fsh levels are low that means it is either a physiological delay in menses okay or it can be a case of colman's syndrome that is anosmia plus hypogonadotropic hypogonadism what do i mean by hypogonadotropic low level problem in pituitary that is low levels of lh and fsh jiski wajah se the gonads are not getting stimulated that is the reason the patient is not getting menses but even uh, but if the lh and fsh levels are high okay if the lh and fsh levels are high that means it should be a case of primary ovarian failure matlab jo tumhari ovaries hai wo dhang se develop hui hi nahi hai please remember that is a case of primary ovarian failure or it can be a case of gonadal dysgenesis under developed or non developed gonads most common cause of gonadal dysgenesis turner's syndrome or the other cause can be lh fsh receptor resistance or it can be galactosemia all of these are the causes which can occur if the lh and fsh levels are high if the secondary sexual characteristics show a synchronicity what is that that means breast is large breast is feminine breast is developed but the pubic and axillary hairs are absent that is a case of testicular feminization syndrome or androgen insensitivity syndrome so agar you want to get primary amenorrhea right once draw the stable by your own at home once or twice it will be very easy to make your diagnosis theek hai secondary amenorrhea secondary amenorrhea mein again the patient was having menses but the menses have stopped upd will be done upd will come out to be negative then you need to check for tsh and prolactin levels if the tsh levels are low it is a case of hypothyroidism if prolactin levels are high it is a case of prolactinemia we know prolactin the antagonist hormone or agonist hormone to sh lh and fsh antagonist so agar prolactin levels high hai to so definite lh and fsh levels are low due to which the patient is having amenorrhea tsh is a agonist or antagonist to lh and fsh agonist it will help lh and fsh so therefore if its levels are low the patient will have amenorrhea hypothyroidism is easily amenorrhea hota patient theek hai 
no issues with this anybody progesterone challenge test should be done if this is not the cause then you need to see after doing a progesterone challenge test if the patient gets periods or not if the patient gets periods after progesterone challenge test then the patient is suffering from pcos but even after doing a progesterone challenge test if the patient is not getting periods then you have to do a estrogen plus progesterone challenge test if even after doing that if the patient is not getting period that means there is no problem with the hormones there is some regions in the uterus that is nothing but ashermans syndrome but if the patient is getting periods after estrogen and progesterone challenge test then you have to check for lh and fsh levels okay lh and fsh levels if they are high that is suggest you of either premature ovarian failure that means the patient was given radiotherapy due to which the ovaries were damaged normally level in menopause is how much 40 international units and in reproductive age group it is 2 to 6 international units but if they say 25 year old female with secondary amenorrhea with fsh level of 40 international unit that is a menopausal level it is a case of premature ovarian failure theek okay? hai that's important next radiotherapy chemotherapy or cervical stenosis no issues with this anybody bolo galactosemia usually galactosemia mein prolactin levels are high that's the reason as prolactin levels are high lh and fsh will be decreased theek okay? hai important is question number 250 a female undergoing ivf was given injection of scg for ovulation trigger now presents with nausea vomiting headache ultrasound pelvis shows ascites and the below given ovarian picture what is the most probable diagnosis so in a case of ivf when we are giving injection of scg hmg or clomiphene citrate after which multiple follicles will develop they become big in size that is a case of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome if there are multiple small small follicles in the periphery of the ovaries with a thick stroma spring of or sorry pearl necklace appearance seen in cases of pc os which criteria is used for diagnosis rotterdam's criteria question number 251 which among the following is induction anesthetic agent of choice for children so for children the inhalational anesthetic agent of choice for induction as well as for maintenance is the same and that answer is sevo fluorin jaldi se bata do bhi blood gas partition coefficient will tell you about the speed or the potency blood gas partition coefficient will tell you about the speed of induction so blood gas partition coefficient is highest sorry blood gas partition coefficient is highest for Test driven and lowest for allothane. Okay, so as you go over here, the blood gas partition coefficient increases. Therefore, the speed of induction will be highest for speed of induction will be highest test driven and lowest for allothane. समझे? Test driven इसीलिए उसे किया जाता है because it is highest speed of induction. But the problem is why it is not used as induction agent of choice? It is a irritant. Okay, therefore. it is not used as a irritant agent as it is irritant therefore it is not used stability is highest with des fluorine smell we know that des fluorine is a irritant halothene has a fruity smell okay so that's important vacuum mein zyada smell nahi hota hai then mac is what minimum alveolar concentration that is highest with halothene and lowest with des fluorine okay so therefore potency agar poochte hain potency depends on mac so therefore most potent will be halothene and least potent will be des fluorine contraindicated halothene is contraindicated in which patient usually cvs patient cvs surgeries mein halothene not recommended but halothene which patients anybody हाँ मैक ज्यादा होगा तो पोटेंसी प्लीज रिमेम्बर दिस इज ओल्ड हेलोथिन इज द मोस्ट पोर्टेंट बिकॉज इट हैज द लोवेस्ट मैक ओके सो दैट्स द इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग नो इश्यूज विद दिस एनीबडी नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट जल्दी से ये बता दो अभी सीवियस सर्जरी में हेलोथिन इज कॉन्ट्रेंटिकेटेड बट हेलोथिन इज द बेस्ट एजेंट टू बी गिवन इन केस ऑफ ब्रोंकियल आस्थमा बिकॉज इट वाज अ मैक्सिमम ब्रोंको डायलेशन अमंग द इनहेलेशनल एजेंट maximum bronco dilation among uh, iv agents is caused by ketamine iv me agar pucha jata hai bronchial asthma patients mein it should be ketamine no issues with this anybody now 
किड्स में इंडक्शन एज वेल एज इन इंडक्शन एज वेल एज मेंस एजेंट ऑफ चॉइस इनहेलेशनल वन इज नोन एज सीवो फ्लूरेन एडल्ट में इंडक्शन एजेंट ऑफ चॉइस सीवो फ्लूरेन बट मेंस एजेंट ऑफ चॉइस डेस फ्लूरेन वाई दो डेस फ्लूरेन हैज हाइय स्पीड इट इज नॉट यूज फॉर इंडक्शन बिकॉज इट इज अरिटेंट ठीक है These are the vaporizers. This big question comes. Yellow color is for sevoflurane. Yellow, purple color is for isoflurane. Red color is for halothane, and blue color is for desflurane. Desflurane has a special vaporizer known as Tech Six vaporizer. Previous year question. Okay. No issues with this. This is a flexo metallic endotracheal tube. Usually, it is kink resistant. It means kink is not there. Okay. So that's the important. Next, orange color cylinder is for cyclopropane. Pin index is three six. Oxygen cylinder is having which kind body? Black body. Which shoulder? White shoulder. Pin index is two five. Then grey body and white and black shoulder. It suggests your air. Pin index is one five. Pure blue color cylinder is nitrous oxide. Pin index is three five. Blue color body and white color shoulder. Endo nox. Fifty percent oxygen. Fifty percent nitrous oxide. Pin index. Seven, two fifty-two. A patient was sent for pre-operative room for an elective tonsillectomy. The anesthesiologist, after assessing the oral cavity, used the modified Malam Patti score, which gave grading based on the image. Which is the which grade is it? So, if all the features are seen, hard palate, soft palate, uvula, and the tonsillar pillar, it is class one. That means there is adequate space for intubation. Next, if the Tonsillar pillars are not seen. It is a class two. If tonsillar pillars as well as the uvula is not seen, it is class three. If the soft palate is also not seen, it is a class four usually. ठीक है अपने patient में क्या नहीं दिख रहा tonsillar pillars as well as uvula. So it is class three. So this was the question. Malam patti grading is used for assessment of size of oral cavity with respect to Intubation. Okay. Question number two fifty three. A patient after a road traffic accident presented to the emergency department with polytrauma. Massive blood loss is there. Which of the following IV line will be used minimum for resuscitation? Recommended are and grey. So largest bore is seen with orange fourteen gauge. Then sixteen gauge grey. Then eighteen gauge green. Twenty gauge. Pink, twenty-two gauge, blue, twenty-four gauge, and twenty-six gauge. It will have the narrowest diameter or the narrowest. Okay, it has the narrowest diameter. In cases of resuscitation, we have to use orange or grey. That is fourteen or sixteen gauge. Okay, in adult male, we have to use green. Adult female, we have to use pink. Okay, then. In child, we have to use blue. In infants, we have to use yellow. And in neonates, we have to use violet. Important is now answer the question. Surgery ke notes khol na zara ja ke ek bar. Green minimum pucha hai maine. Did I ask recommended? Did I ask recommended? What did I ask was minimum. Which minimum IV line should be inserted during resuscitation? Minimum two eighteen gauge IV lines, that is green coloured IV lines, are to be inserted. Recommended will be orange followed by grey. But minimum पूछा जाता है, that means इसके नीचे कोई नहीं, that is green colour IV line. ठीक है? आठ साल के होते हो तो कहाँ थे हो? College में. कौन दिखती है? हरियाली. So eighteen gauges green colour. बीस साल में क्या होता है? प्यार. So definitely क्या हो जाएगा? हर जगह गुलाबी गुलाबी दिखे देगा. ठीक है रोमांस देन दो साल बाद गर्लफ्रेंड रात मार के चली जाती है आसमान में तारे नजर आते हैं दैट इज ट्वेंटी टू गेज इज ब्लू कलर ट्वेंटी थर्टी एट ईयर ओल्ड इज पोस्टेड फॉर एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ लास्ट मोलार टूथ अंडर जनरल एनसीशिया एज अ डे केयर केस डे केयर मतलब एडमिट करोगे निकालोगे छोड़ दोगे Now he wishes to resume his work after six hours. Which one of the following induction agent is preferred? Take care surgery. The induction agent of choice is propofol. Definitely, all IV anesthetic agents will cause vomiting and nausea. The only one which does not cause it is 
propofol rather propofol is anti emetic what is the most common side effect of pro propofol the most common uh, side effect is pain at the injection site usually in children what is a better iv anesthetic agent to be used ketamine kids mein ketamine shock ke patient mein ketamine because it increases the blood pressure but it is contraindicated in a patient of glaucoma okay it is contraindicated in a patient of cardiovascular compromise or it is called contraindicated in a patient of head injury please remember because it is known to increase all pressures it increases intraocular intracranial blood pressure everything that's the reason theek hai narco analysis ke liye what we use hypopentone sodium and uh, which is used which is the most cardiovascular stable iv anesthetic agent shabash atomy date previously a question atomy date ka side effect again a question it causes adrenal suppression please remember that's the reason why atomidate is not used in any other surgery except cvs surgeries 255 which of the following is not an indication of the following device what is the device it is a tracheostomy tube it is a cuffed or uncuffed tube it is a cuffed tracheostomy tube now important what is the indication of tracheostomy tube if you are not able to intubate a patient that is can't intubate can't oxygenate wale what are those usually bilateral abductor palsy because we have seen bilateral abductor palsy is due to bilateral rln injury both vocal cords will be closed can you intubate no so in that condition will perform tracheostomy prolonged mechanical ventilation that means a patient is admitted for 3 weeks or more in the icu and he or a comatose patient definitely ET tube cannot be kept for a longer duration of time because it causes laryngeal edema. Therefore, we have to shift to tracheostomy as well. Any kind of cervical spine fracture because if we try to extend the neck during intubation, it will obliterate the fracture. It will die. Or any case of short neck or basically wherever it is in that condition, we will perform tracheostomy. But assessment is examination. You say you examine it, you do not examine. so definitely that is not a indication of tracheostomy tube theek okay? hai so this is your et tube definitely double lumen et tube is used in which can be surgeries thoracoscopic surgeries important is that please remember this theek okay? hai no issues with this anybody this is which airway goodell airway also known as oro pharyngeal airway kaun si ent condition mein use hota hai anybody bilateral coanal atresia emergency management bola tha either macgowan's technique or goodell's airway theek hai ye lma is hai if intubation fails you can try for lma also this is the lma classic if yahan pe opening dikhti hai to it is a lma proseal okay <laughs> if it has jet inside it it is a lma supreme usually theek hai these are the oxygen delivery devices ye sab snaps mein ye question pucha ja chuka hai what is this This is a venturi or a venti mask. Based on which principle? Venturi's principle. Maximum FiO2 delivered is 60 percent. Okay, no issues with this. FiO2 can be you can call it 0.6 or 60 percent. It's one and the same thing. 256. Which among the following technique is used to confirm correct placement of the endotracheal tube? Very good. It is the capnography, which will measure the end tidal CO2. Please remember. क्योंकि अगर ट्यूब बराबर एयरवे में है इट विल ओनली रिलीज सीओ टू एंड इफ यू कनेक्ट अपनोग्राफी टू इट डेफिनेटली दैट रिकॉर्डिंग विल बी सीन नो इश्यूज विद दिस स्पेक्ट्रल इंडेक्स विल टेल यू अबाउट द शाबाश इट टेल्स यू अबाउट द डेप्थ ऑफ एनेस्थीशिया ड्यूरिंग सर्जरी कितना होना चाहिए इंट्रॉप फिफ्टी टू फोर्टी टू सिक्सटी कैन बी देर ओके फोर्टी टू सिक्सटी नो इश्यूज विद दिस एनी बडी दिस इज कैपनोग्राफी नॉर्मल कैपनोग्राम ये रहा ठीक है इन ब्रोंकियल इन ब्रोंकोस्पैजम कंडीशन लाइक सीओपीडी और आस्थमा इट शोज शार्क फिन अपियरेंस प्लीज रिमेंबर नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इज दिस वेन देर इज अच वट इज दिस नॉच कॉल्ड एस कुरारे क्लेफ्ट और कुरारे नॉच इट सीज दैट द पेशेंट एज स्टार्टेड ब्रीदिंग बाई हिज ओन दैट मीन्स इट इज सजेस्ट ऑफ रिटर्न ऑफ स्पॉन्टेनियस वेंटिलेशन क्या करोगे इस कंडीशन में आगे यू विल गिव अनादर डोस ऑफ स्केलेटल मसल रिलैक्सेंट ठीक है नो इश्यूज विद दिस एंड कार्डियोजेनिक ऑसोलेशन आर सीन इन पीडियाट्रिक एंड थिन पेशेंट दीज आर कॉल्ड एज कार्डियोजेनिक ऑसोलेशन टू फिफ्टी सेवन पेशेंट फॉलोइंग रोड ट्रैफिक एक्सीडेंट वॉज ब्रॉड टू द इमरजेंसी रूम टू आवर्स लेटर ऑन एग्जामिनेशन 
GCS is 15 on 15. Pupil are reactive. Tenderness and bruising over the left lower chest. Severe tenderness was elicited in the left hypochondriac region. Matlab, left lower chest also as well as left hypochondria. Matlab, thoracic plus abdominal trauma they are talking about. And BP is 90 by 50 mm of Hg. That means the patient is hemodynamically unstable. What is the best investigation used in? It is very good. First line investigation for a stable as well as unstable patient is always a fast. But for an unstable patient, the best investigation will be fast. As here, there is also thoracic trauma which is suspected. So extended or E fast. Agar stable hota patient, then best investigation would have been CECT. In a stable patient, the best investigation would have been CECT. No issues with this, anybody? Question number 258. A dancer presents to the ortho OPD with pain and swelling in the foot. On examination, tenderness is noted at second and third metatarsal. Which is the best investigation to make an appropriate diagnosis? Provisional diagnosis is what? Dancer's fracture is tibial valve, sorry, fibula fracture. March fracture. It is a case of March fracture, which is a type of stress fracture. Stress fracture means the bone is normal. It is not osteoporotic. But there is a constant pressure on the bone due to which the bone is getting fractured. So it is a stress fracture, a type of stress fracture which occurs in the second or the third metatarsal shaft is what is called as March fracture. And the investigation of choice for them is the MRI. 259. You are a resident of radiology. Sapna. Pura karo mein. A resident of radiology and heavily built bodybuilder comes you for an comes you for an X-ray. Which of the following factors should be modified? So important. There are two important things. One is KVP, that is kilo voltage peak, and second is MAS, that is milliampere second. KVP is directly proportional to linear energy transfer. KVP is directly proportional to penetrating power. KVP is inversely proportional to contrast. That means contrast is nothing but the background blackening. So background jitna black hoga image utni achi dikhegi tumhe. Okay, that's important. And MAS has no role with linear energy transfer, no connection with penetrating power. It is directly proportional to contrast. Now when MAS is increased, the contrast will also increase. Therefore, the picture will appear better. Important is, hum KVP bhi badha sakte hai. We can increase KVP, but when we will increase KVP in an obese patient, penetrating power will be better. But the image will be bad, its contrast will be bad. Okay, because we are increasing KVP, so contrast is falling. And that's the reason why we will not get a proper clear image. Therefore, definitely, it is better to only increase the MAS. So we have to increase milliampere second. No issues with this, anybody? Highest penetrating power. Everything is highest with? Which rays? Alpha X-ray, alpha rays, gamma rays, beta rays. Highest penetrating power is seen with gamma rays. Everything, rest everything is high with alpha rays. Everything is high with alpha rays except penetrating power. Penetrating power is highest with gamma rays. That was the previous question. Okay, baki stuff is alpha rays. Penetrating power high, gamma rays. That was the previous question. 260, the below given X-ray paranasal sinus is known as now, important is, what is this view, first of all? X-ray, skull, lateral view. Can you see all the sinuses? Yes. So, if they ask you, all sinuses are visible on which X-ray? Answer should be lateral, X-ray, skull, lateral view. Which is the best view for all sinuses? Water's view. But which sinus is never visible on water's view? Posterior rhythmoidal sinus is not visible on a water's view. Water's view can be either open mouth or Closed mouth, open mouth, what does you have a name known as? Pierce view. Okay, important. Wow. <laughs> then please tell me, X-ray skull lateral view is the best view for which particular sinus? Pinoid sinus. Okay, what does view is the best view for? What does view is the best view for? Maxillary sinus. Okay, please remember, what does view can also be called as occipital mental view. This is which one? The Kya bola tha? Kaise differentiate karna hai? Agar lag raha hai ki patient paani pee raha hai, that means it is a water's view. Asa lag raha hai ki patient saamne dekh raha hai, that is what is the occipital frontal or the Caldwell's 
view. So this is the Caldwell's view, which is the best view for frontal as well as the ethmoidal sinuses. So it is occipitofrontal or the Caldwell's view. 261. A 35-year-old patient with morning stiffness and low backache and reduced chest expansion. He also gives history of pain and redness in the eyes. What is the diagnosis based on history and radiograph given? Young patient with low back ache, along with morning stiffness, okay, along with reduced chest expansion, classical case of ankylosing spondylitis. It is a HLA related condition and it is associated with pain and redness in IR, suggestive of anterior uveitis. What is the drug of choice for anterior uveitis? And drug of choice for anterior uveitis, re bhai. That is contraindicated to latinoprost bol rho. Mm -hmm. Drug of choice, steroids. It is an inflammation na bhai. So drug of choice for anterior uveitis are steroids. Drug of choice for acute attack agar pushte hai. Then we need cycloplegics. Q because they will help in breaking the attack. Okay, so that's the important thing. No issues with this. Ankylosing spondylitis, calcification of all the ligaments causing trolley track sign along with bamboo spine is seen due to fusion of the vertebral bodies and bilateral sacroiliitis. Okay, so this is what is hyperparathyroidism. I've already told you salt and pepper skull, subperiosteal resorption of phalanges usually. Can you see? Then rugger jersey, spine and brown's tumor. 262. A patient presents with fever, tachypnea, respiratory distress. On auscultation, crepitations are heard. Chest x ray is given, which shows fever, tachypnea, and respiratory distress are features of pneumonia. And pneumonia causes fluid collection inside the lungs. And that leads to opacity or whitish appearance on the x ray. That is what is called as consolidation. Consi lung may consolidation. Definitely. Heart shadow is therapy. So it is the left lung. Okay. And which part of the left lung? There are only two lobes of the left lung. Upper or lower lobe. Okay. There are only upper and lower lobe. And the lower lobe has a part. And that is called as lingula. So therefore it is a left lingular consolidation. Right lobe. Right side may teen lobe. Hote upper and lower. Left may dohi lobe. Hote and there is a lingula which is present in the center. Agar nahi hota, to left lower lobe mark karta mein. As lingula is there, na, specific bol rahe na, wo yaar. Therefore, 263, an elderly patient comes to the hospital with a history of fall in the bathroom seven days ago. Now complains of headache along with one episode of vomiting. NCCD head was performed and has been given below, which is the vessel that can undergo rupture. What is the diagnosis? Kya? So, elderly patient, usually the intracranial hemorrhages, which occur usually in elderly patient, theke, with history of fall in the bathroom, that is a trivial trauma, and patient presents late to us, not immediately after the episode, and there is headache with vomiting, these are features of raised ICP, and showing which kind of appearance, concavo, convex appearance, Tum bolo ke, sir, ye to black dikh hai. hemorrhage to white dikhna chahiye. only intracranial hemorrhage, which can have a Subacute or a chronic course is SDH. So it is a case of subacute SDH because between 1 to 21 days it is subacute SDH. After 21 days it is a case of chronic SDH. The that white dikta hai, but baad mein wo bhi black ho jata hai. So it is a case of subacute SDH in the patient. Okay. So what is the most common vessels which bleed in subacute SDH? It is the cortical bridging emissary. Veins. These only venous intracranial hemorrhage is this one. No issues with this. MMA bleeds in EDH, which shift opacity by convex opacity. Lenticular stride artery or Charcot's artery bleeds in intracerebral or intraparenchymal hemorrhage. Most common site is Buta men, seen in elderly patient with uncontrolled hypertension. Middle cerebral artery usually it does not bleed, it has ischemia. Most chances of ischemia causing ischemic stroke. Question number 264. A 50-year-old patient comes with complaints of abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and hepatomegaly is noted. Palpation on palpation. CCT abdomen was performed and has been given below. What is the next step in management? 
What is your diagnosis? What is seen on CCT? Can you see it is a case of some cyst because there is a cavity with fluid inside it and that cyst shows a membrane which is floating inside. So, what is the sign? Floating water lily sign. Floating water lily sign is definitely seen. So, it is a diagnosis of hydrated cyst. Single hydrated cyst or multiple hydrated cyst? Multiple hydrated cyst. Most common cause of hydrated cyst is definitely echinococcus granulosus, known as dog tape worm. But multiple hydrated cyst ka cause is echinococcus multilocularis. We have discussed that already. Okay? No issues with this. So, what is the next step in management in this patient? Liver resection. Because if it is a single, please remember, first line management for hydrated cyst, pair therapy. But only in cases of a single cyst. Multiple cysts are a contraindication for pair therapy. What is pair? Percutaneous aspiration and injection of scolicidal agents and re-aspiration. But we know pair therapy is contraindicated when there are multiple cysts. In cases of deep-seated cysts, in a impending rupture. Okay, in cases of pregnancy. In these conditions, pair therapy is absolutely contraindicated. Over there, we go for cystoperistectomy. If there is a Again, single cyst. But if multiple cysts, then how many cysts will you get? So it's better to go for a liver resection. If they would have said there is fever and all of the features with this last shift ulcers in intestine and uncovy sauce pus, this is a case of amoebic liver abscess. Drug of choice would have been metronidazole. 2265. A 60-year-old known hypertensive individual presents to the casualty with sudden severe chest pain radiating to the interscapular area. Chest pain radiating to interscapular area. Diagnosis badao. Epigastric pain radiating to back. Acute pancreatitis. Chest pain radiating to back. Answer is aortic dissection. Blood pressure is 96 by 60 mm of Hg. That means the patient is unstable usually. Chest x-ray shows mediastinal widening. And if, what is the best investigation overall? CCT, okay? It will show which sign? Tennis ball sign, okay? What is the best investigation for diagnosis? Very good. Now, aortic dissection, I have said the investigation of choice differs whether the patient is hemodynamically stable or the patient is hemodynamically unstable. If the patient is hemodynamically stable, then my investigation of choice would be CT and geography. Is our patient hemodynamically stable? No, he is unstable. Therefore, my investigation of choice should be transesophageal echocardiography. Okay? Stanford A and Stanford B. Tha. If ascending and descending aorta are involved, that is Stanford A. Only descending aorta is involved, that is Stanford B. Treatment Stanford A ke liye. Always a surgical repair. Stanford B ke liye give IV, esmolol, and then monitor. If patient deteriorates, then take up the patient for surgical repair. 266. A 14 year old boy presented with complaints of cheek swelling, profuse recurrent, epistaxis, and proptosis, protrusion of eyeball. Which among the following is the best investigation to confirm a diagnosis? What are you suspecting? Very good. It is a case of JNA, juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, juvenile age group less than 18 years of age, along with cheek swelling and profuse epistaxis, that is nose bleeds, bar bar, because juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma is a vascular tumor. Therefore, the investigation of choice should be CE. CT. Biopsy agar karoge, the patient will bleed to death. Okay. CCT will tell you about the source and which sign will be seen on CCT. Holman Miller sign, also known as the antral sign. Bacche mein kaun si deformity dikhti hai? Rock face deformity. What is the treatment of choice? Surgical adhesion. Two questions na isi bar. FMG. Agar patient hai more than 50 years of age, Chinese race, most common presentation is cervical lymphadenopathy which is painless in nature okay unilateral conductive hearing loss along with trigeminal neuralgia and palatal palsy it is a case of nasopharyngeal carcinoma for juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma site of origin was spino palatine foramen for nasopharyngeal angiocarcinoma it is fossa of rosen muller which tried is seen side npc n for 
neuralgia due to which nerve involvement fifth nerve involvement parietal palsy due to 10th nerve involvement and unilateral conductive hearing loss treatment will be chemo radiation isliye bata 58 year old patient neck swelling along with retro orbital pain hearing loss in his right ear unilateral hearing loss lymph nodes are palpable in the neck what is the best management diagnosis is as you to abhi to banwaya nasopharyngeal carcinoma na patient more than 58 years 50 years definitely along with neck swelling due to lymphadenopathy along with the trotter stride wala feature that is retro orbital pain hearing loss so it the treatment should be chemo radiation 268 a patient comes to the opd with long history of smoking and recently has started complaining of feeling of lump inside the throat throat pain and muffled voice direct laryngoscopy and biopsy confirms malignancy and it reveals that both the vocal cords are involved with intact mobility but abhi bhi vocal cords move ho rahe ya nahi ho rahe hai they can move still okay no nodal metastasis what is the staging of cancer t2 t1 is what t1 is one structure involvement vocal cords together are considered as one structure T one A is one vocal cord involvement. T one B is two vocal cord involvement. But in both of them, the mobility will be absolutely fine. T two is more than one structure involvement. T three is when the vocal cords are fixed or they are immobile. But here they are not immobile. Otherwise, it would have become T three. Okay, and T four is when there is extra laryngeal extension. अपने पेशेंट में क्या है? Both the vocal cords are involved, but the mobility is absolutely fine. So it should be T1 B no nodal metastasis to N0 M0 T1 T2 are treated with radio therapy T3 and T4 are treated with total laryngectomy followed by radio therapy with or without radical neck dissection. ये एंटी के भी हाल खराब है. New net was brought. With complaints of respiratory distress, आने के बाद recall तो अच्छे दे देना भाई दोनों subject के मेरे. Neonate was brought with complaints of respiratory distress. His abdomen appears scooped out, and there is a barrel chest. That means the anteroposterior diameter of chest is increased because all the abdominal organs are going inside the thorax. Therefore, the size of thorax is increased. X-ray chest has been given below. क्या दिख रहा है? Pavel loops are seen inside the thoracic. cavity what is the diagnosis it is a case of congenital diaphragmatic hernia okay when there is a or hole in the diaphragm due to which the abdominal organs of the intestine is going into the thoracic cavity and it is compressing the lung therefore the child is having respiratory distress then the child will have the heart will be shifted towards the right side that is dextrocardia and the child will have as the abdominal organs are going in thoracic cavity there will be a scaphoid or a scooped out abdomen rds is the triad no issues with this important most common type of hernia is bosch dalek hernia which is on the right side in the postero lateral wall kaha dikh raha hai ye where are you able to see kaha pe dikh raha hai ye right or left left side okay in the postero lateral wall so it is the most common type of hernia that is what is the bosch dalek hernia bosch dalek hernia is on the left side in the postero lateral wall morgagni right side in the anteromedial wall so yaha pe left side pe dikh raha hai and definitely it is in the postero lateral wall so it is a case of bosch dalek hernia okay what is contraindicated in congenital diaphragmatic hernia ambu bag okay A patient presented to emergency with sudden onset severe abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting. Examination reveals stable vitals, okay, but diffuse tenderness over the abdomen. X-ray was done, which has been given below. Okay, what is the best step in management? What does the X-ray show? You can see air or gas under the diaphragm, also known as with sign, cupula sign or the moustache sign. It is suggestive of what? it it is suggestive of hollow viscous 
perforation that means either the stomach or the intestines have been perforated due to which the gas from them has leaked out into the peritoneum okay as along with that the patient is having features of sudden onset severe abdominal pain nausea vomiting okay diffuse tenderness all over the abdomen sometimes cardboard like rigidity or guarding all of features of peritonitis so perforation with peritonitis so it is a case of perforation peritonitis what is the best step in management exploratory laparotomy with peritoneal lavage then closure of perforation question number 271 a 60 year old patient complains of midline neck swelling which is increasing in size she gives history of multinodular goiter you suspect thyroid cancer in the patient which investigation would you not prefer diagnosis patient more than 50 years of age okay patient having multinodular goiter in the history it is a case of which thyroid cancer follicular carcinoma of thyroid if the patient was young age group if the patient was in young age group and the risk factor would have been either radiation exposure or thyroglossal cyst then my diagnosis would have been papillary carcinoma of thyroid which is the most common thyroid cancer but now my diagnosis is the second most common thyroid cancer because the risk factor is multinodular goiter and the patient is more than 50 years of age so in follicular carcinoma of thyroid which investigation is not diagnostic fnsc because it cannot differentiate between follicular adenoma and a follicular carcinoma that's the reason it is not useful ultrasound neck true cut biopsy and ct neck can be done please remember and in papillary carcinoma of thyroid cancer you can see which classical appearance orphan anea nuclei and which bodies what are these calcified bodies thymoma bodies usually theek hai what is this amyloid rich stroma in which cancer medullary carcinoma of thyroid with syndromes ke sath associated it is men do with gene mutation red proton ko gene mutation tumor marker is calcitonin 272 of 37 year old male okay middle age male complains of episodes of ringing sensation in ear with vertigo ringing sensation is called as tinnitus so episodic tinnitus episodic vertigo with nausea and hearing loss patient avoids to get go to noisy areas as he experiences vertigo in noisy areas kya bolte usko recruitment phenomena okay experiences vertigo in noisy areas that is known as recruitment phenomena what is the best investigation to confirm diagnosis what is your provisional diagnosis it is a case of meniere's disease which is actually a episodic disease where one episode usually lasts for a span of 24 hours and that is characterized by three features one is ringing sensation known as tinnitus second is hearing loss and third is vertigo please remember recruitment phenomena tullio's phenomena and tumor kins crisis pta pure tone audiometry shows what which kind of audiogram rising audiogram where a sloping audiogram will be a feature of very good press by a acuses that is age induced hearing loss best investigation to confirm diagnosis hmm barabar na bolun fir electrocardiography please remember because meniere's disease it is due to increased endolymphatic pressure the cochlea is getting damaged that's the reason first line investigation pucha hota answer should have been pta that's the basic reason tympanometry will tell you about the movement of tympanic membrane and the ear ossicle normal is type a ad is suggestive of ossicular dislocation asc is seen in auto sclerosis type b or flat curve in glue ear that is serous otitis media second tympanic membrane perforation type c is seen in station tube blockage 273 a 25 year old male welder by profession presents with complaints of redness pain and irritation since morning on examination the findings in the below given image are seen what is the best line of management what is this this is nothing but welder and a so more likely it is a foreign body which is a iron foreign body right so it is a iron foreign body what should be done removal with 26 gauge needle copious saline irrigation is usually done in chemical burns or chemical injury to the eye acids or 
अल्कलीज प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट ठीक है वॉट इज दिस इन अ केस ऑफ कंकशन ट्रॉमा ऐसा झटका बैठता है तो द आयरिस पिगमेंट डिपॉजिट ऑन द लेंस दिस इज कॉल्ड एज विच रिंग वॉशियस रिंग दिस इज ओन एज द वॉशियस रिंग ओके नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वॉट इज दिस कैट्रैक दिस इज अ रोजेड कैट्रैक ड्यू टू विच काइंड ऑफ ट्रॉमा ब्लंट ट्रॉमा टू द आई ओके एंड वॉट इज दिस क्लासिकल टीयर ड्रॉप साइन ऑन सिटी सरकारी क्वेश्चन बन चुका है वॉट इज द डायग्नोसिस it is blow out orbital fracture most common wall to be fractured is inferior wall or the floor 274 a patient with history of running nose and pain over the medial aspect in the eye presents with sudden onset high grade fever prostration chemosis proptosis and diplopia on lateral gaze diplopia on lateral gaze matlab side mein dekhta hai to double dikhai deta hai so it is due to which muscle palsy lateral rectus which nerve injury Sixth cranial nerve, lateral rectus, with congestion of optic disc. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? It is a case of cavernous sinus thrombosis. Cavernous sinus is the main vein of the anterior cranial fossa. In middle of the cavernous sinus, we have the sixth cranial vein. So the earliest cranial vein to be involved, or most common cranial nerve to be involved in cases of cavernous sinus thrombosis, should be the sixth cranial nerve, known as your abducens nerve. And on sides we have. third fourth and fifth cranial nerve later on is will also be involved in cases of cavernous sinus thrombosis this is a case of periorbital or orbital cellulitis when there is a periorbital swelling redness and inflammatory sign it is a complication of ethmoidal sinusitis that's important 275 a 50 year old male suffers a penetrating injury to his left eye while ripping plywood on his table saw at home the wood splinter is removed and there, there appears to be a partial uveal prolapse but he still has vision in the left eye okay still has vision in the left eye 3 weeks later he has loss of accommodation photophobia and blurred vision in his right eye choroidal infiltrates are seen on fundoscopic examination most likely diagnosis is penetrating injury to the eye usually involving one eye but also then in the another eye also it is a bilateral granulomatous Bilateral granulomatous pan uveitis. That is this word. Sympathetic ophthalmia. Please remember this. What is the treatment for sympathetic ophthalmia? Both eyes are affected eye. Affected eye. Okay. To prevent the normal eye, definitely. Please remember. Removal of only the inner layer of eye wall is known as e visceration. It is done in cases of End of thalamite is not responding to anti-epileptic. Please remember, and this is what orbit is removed. That is exenteration done in case of mucor mycosis. Shabash. Two seventy-six. A two-year-old child is brought by mother with complaints of excessive watering from eyes. That is lacrimation or epiphora. Inability to open the eyes in light. That is photophobia, and he is not able to open the eyes. Because there is blepharospasm. B P L is the characteristic trait of congenital glaucoma. And what is this feature in the image? This is bophthalmos. That is a bull-like eye. So it is a case of congenital glaucoma. What is the best treatment in above mentioned condition? Now, why does congenital glaucoma develop? Glaucoma is increase in intraocular pressure, which is present since birth. Q Because the outflow which is there, the trabecular meshwork, it is not properly formed. Trabeculo dysgenesis is the cause. Therefore, better is to repair that. That is trabeculotomy plus trabeculectomy is the best treatment. Peripheral iridotomy is this one. When do we do peripheral iridotomy? Angle closure glaucoma. When there is less than one eighty degree synecy. ठीक है? No issues with this. What is this? Very good. ये image आई थी और बस पूछा था treatment क्या है? Pan retinal photocoagulation done in cases of proliferative diabetic retinopathy. What is this with sign? Munson sign and Munson sign is notching of lower lid on looking down in cases of keratoconus. Common sign of this repeated change of glass numbers usually. No issues with this anybody. Treatment for keratoconus. C three R that is collagen cross linkage with. Riboflavin drops. Two seventy-seven. A thirty-five-year-old man 
presents with progressive loss of vision in left halves of both the eyes. What is the site of lesion? Jaldi say, if the eye, all of you are quite aware that eye patient, that is nasal fibers are responsible for temporal vision and temporal fibers are responsible for nasal vision definitely. Okay? Important is these two fibers come together and form the optic nerve. Then this optic nerve may crossing hoti hai. Only which fibers cross? Nasal fibers will cross at the level of optic chiasma. Then definitely they continue into the optic tract. Then the lateral geniculate body and then the optic radiations which will go into the visual cortex. Now if there is damage to the optic nerve on the affected side there will be complete loss of vision. So if there is complete loss of vision that is called as monocular vision loss or it can be called as anopia. Complete loss of vision is known as anopia. It will be seen on same side or opposite side. Same side. Agar mere right side ki optic nerve uh, damaged hai, I will have right sided anopia. Next, if there is compression at the level of optic chiasma, which fibers will be compressed? Nasal fibers will be compressed. And we know that nasal fibers are responsible for which vision? Temporal vision. So I will lose my vision in both the temporal fields. That is known as by temporal hemianopia. Why hemi? Because I am only losing half my vision in which fields temporal fields so by a temporal hemianopia in one eye there is a left sided vision loss in another eye there is a right so this will be homonymous or heteronymous same ka hota hai re, matlab homonymous this is a case of heteronymous hemianopia okay it is due to damage at the level of optic chiasma if there is any damage below optic chiasma easy ab any damage below optic chiasma, skin each year, whether it is optic tract, lateral geniculate body, optic radiation, visual cortex, the patient will always have hemianopia. But important is that will always be homonymous hemianopia. Homonymous matlab, same sided vision loss. That means if I am losing vision in right half of both the eyes or left half of both the eyes. So, ek to bolenge, dono mein, right halves of both the eyes mein dikkat hai. Yeah, left halves of both eyes mein dikkat hai. Okay, that is what is called as homo nimus hemianopia. Okay, vision loss in the same halves of both the eyes. Important. Now, if I am saying that vision loss is in the left halves of both eyes, that means the lesion will be in the right optic tract, right uh, lateral geniculate body, right optic radiation or the right visual okay, below the optic chiasma. It will always be contralateral. It will always be contralateral. Below optic asthma, everything is always contralateral. Ye baat yaad rakhna, Misha. No issues with this. And if they say hemianopia with macular sparing, then it is due to damage at the level of visual. Now, apne patient mein, there is vision loss in which halves? Left halves of both eyes. So, where will be the lesion? Left side or right side? Right side. Okay, so right side at what? Optic. No issues with this? Ah, bolo. Kya? Argon fluoride laser use kar te ho tum. 278. A, par a farmer presented to you with the below given finding and he complains of mild diminution of vision. Which among the following will be prescribed to this patient? What is the ulcer first of all? It is inflammation of the cornea that is keratitis which is finally causing a corneal ulcer. Usually they are giving a history of farmer. That means they are talking about some trauma with some vegetative material. Direct question tha. Trauma with vegetative material can cause. Answer was fungal corneal ulcer. Second important. Fungal corneal ulcer is which shaped ulcer? Ring shaped ulcer with important features. Satellite nodules. Please remember this was the question. Satellite nodules are a feature of. Answer was directly fungal corneal ulcer. Along with that hypo pion is usually seen with feathery margins and an immunological ring of weasley. Okay. What is the drug of choice for fungal corneal ulcer now? It should be 5% natamycin drops. Please remember that. PHMB eye drops is the drug of choice for acanthamoeba keratitis. Acanthamoeba ulcer can be of any shape, any size it can be. But important, it is the most painful ulcer. Please remember that. Next, ciprofloxacin drops are the antibiotic drops. They can be used for Bacterial corneal ulcer and bacterial corneal ulcer usually can be caused by 
it can be caused by staph aureus and pseudomonas 3% acyclovir drops will be used for viral ulcer and viral keratitis here sarkari question exam ka tumhari it is usually seen in dendritic so viral ulcer will be having dendrite like feature therefore it is called as a dendritic ulcer drug of choice is 3% acyclovir drop a patient comes to you with complaints of decreased visual acuity and dryness of eye he was diagnosed as a case of chlamydial follicular conjunctivitis chlamydial and follicular conjunctivitis are a case of trachoma trachoma can also be called as chlamydial conjunctivitis or a follicular conjunctivitis because the characteristic feature is follicles okay papillary conjunctivitis is nothing but vkc okay vernal keratoconjunctivitis. conjunctivitis which among the following is incorrect about her management what is the strategy used for trachoma say strategy given by who s stands for surgery but surgery for trichiasis that is misdirected cilia next sanitation and uh, a stands for antibiotic drug of choice is azithromycin and for prophylaxis one percent tetracycline ointment f stands for facial cleanliness and e stands for environmental cleanliness or sanitation so what is not the answer Surgery for dystichiasis is not there. Surgery for trichiasis is definitely done. Okay, so that is the safe strategy. Important. What are these? These are sygograin like follicles. And follicles which are scarred and depressed on the upper limbus are called as Herbert's pits. These are the most pathognomic feature of trachoma. These are the papillae. This is scarred line known as arts line. Okay, and this is the panis. 280. A child has been brought with abnormal white pupillary reflex. This abnormal white pupillary reflex is known as leukocoria. Coria ka matla pupil, white pupil is the most common cause of white pupil or leukocoria is retinoblastoma followed by congenital cataract. Theke? So, histopathological examination after excision reveals the below given picture. What are this picture shows? Which rosettes? Flexner, Wintersteina, rosettes, definitely. Okay. The malignant cells are arranged in rosette or rose petal like fashion. These are Flexner, Wintersteina, rosettes. Okay. A mass has been removed from the eye. So it is which tumor? Retinoblastoma. Which gene mutation? RB gene mutation. Chromosome number 13, Q. No issues with this. That's the important thing. Okay. This is what? This is. This is a case of Arcus. Senilis. This is a case of Arcus senilis. That means with age, definitely there is lipid deposition around the limbus. But this is a case of pseudo gerontoxon. Okay, that is a case of definitely pseudo gerontoxon. That is a false Arcus senilis, you can see. Okay, that is a false Arcus senilis. It is due to deposition of debris. Okay, no issues with this. The treatment for retinoblastoma should be E nucleation. 281, a 64-year-old man with history of triple coronary artery bypass grafting two years ago presents with peripheral arterial occlusive disease. His only medication is a thiazide diuretic. Which of the following medications would be most appropriate in the medical management of his atherosclerosis? Kya dena chaoge? So, yaar, triple coronary artery bypass grafting kari hai, peripheral arterial occlusive disease is patient mein, uske saath saath, thiazide diuretic chal rahi hai. So, most appropriate in the management of atherosclerosis will be, kya start karna chauge? Low molecular weight, heparin has to be started because it is an anticoagulant agent. Please remember that. No issues with this. Important is, but, but RO my but pay. important is here as the patient is not admitted, we have to keep the patient on a oral drug because low molecular weight heparin is a injectable agent. Therefore, the answer should be aspirin. A patient has sudden painless loss of vision and fundoscopy has been given below. What is the diagnosis? It is easiest. Kya dikh rahe? It is the tomato flash appearance or the thunderstorm appearance. And it is due to multiple, more than 100, more than 
100 flame shaped hemorrhages and the diagnosis CRVO central retinal venous occlusion CRAO mein kya dikhta hai we classically see the cherry red spot along with retinal whitening and segmental blood flow known as with sign railway track sign or the cattle tracking sign what is this anybody new vessels are formed and the patient is having raised iop it is a case of neovascular glaucoma also known as 100 day glaucoma which can occur after a case of proliferative diabetic retinopathy or after a case of crvo as well okay and what is this pehle question aa chuka hai brvo that is a branch retinal venous occlusion this was a previous year question of fmg exam a 30 year old man was assaulted with lathis during a protest by local public in his area and attends the emergency and trauma department where he was shifted by the ambulance he is talking but appears confused he cooperates with examination and follows the commands he is given he opens his eyes to voice what is the gcs score so jaldi se eye opening uh, glasgow score is e v m 4 5 6 eye opening maximum is e4 that is spontaneous opening eye opening to sound is e3 eye opening to pain or pressure is e2 no eye opening is e1 if the patient is oriented to time place and person it is v5 patient is confused it is v4 if the patient is only speaking in appropriate words gali pe gali de v3 if the patient is only making incomprehensible sounds v2 and no sounds v1 if the patient is obeying command m6 if the patient is localizing pain m5 if the patient withdraws on pain or normal flexion m4 if there is an abnormal flexion known as the corticate position that is m3 extension known as the cerebrate position e2 and no response one maximum gcs score 15 minimum gcs score 3 3 score is suggestive of brain dead patient GCS score between 13 to 15 is suggestive of mild head injury. 9 to 12, moderate head injury. 3 to 8, severe head injury. Ab jaldi se batao. Patient appears confused. So V, 4. Okay, then he follows the commands. That's this M, 6. Okay, opens eyes to voice. That is E, 3. 3 plus 4 plus 6. Kitna hota hai? 7 plus 13. 284. A child presents to you with two day history of diarrhea and is restless, thirsty, and drinks eagerly. The child is crying, but the tears are absent and the skin pinch goes back slowly. The treatment plan for, to be followed for this child is Jaldi say, if the child is not having enough signs to classify into diarrhea or dehydration, that is called in the green category of no dehydration. Here, the child will be managed with plan A. Next is, if the child is having Two of the following signs. That means the child is restless or irritable. Chid chid if there are sunken eyes, the child is very thirsty and he drinks very eagerly or the skin pinch goes back slowly. In this condition, it is some dehydration. That is yellow category and he is treated with plan B. Next, if the child is having any of these signs, that is the general danger signs. That means the child is lethargic or unconscious or the child is having sunken eyes or the child is not able to drink or the child is drinking very poorly good good p levels and the skin pinch goes back very slowly very slowly okay so this is the pink category that is severe dehydration and here the child will be treated with plan c plan a is what 50 to 100 ml of ors after every loose stool her stool ke baad 50 to 100 ml of ors plan b is what 75 ml per kg of IV or oral fluids over a span of 4 hours. And lastly, plan C is what? 100 ml per kg of IV fluids over a span of 3 hours or 6 hours. 6 hours in an infant, 3 hours in a child. Okay? Important is, is bachche mein kya lag raha hai Restless hai bachcha, thirsty hai, drinks eagerly. Tears are absent. Skin pinch goes back slowly. So it is a case of some dehydration. Which category? Yellow category. So treated with plan B. And plan B is what? Oral fluids, 75 ml per kg or 4 hours. You say, sir, IV kab denge? Jab vomit. If the child is vomiting, then plan B will be shifted to IV. 
that's the only thing 285 a 12 year old boy presented with progressive muscular weakness with following finding and it was found that the child was unable to get up from squatting position okay if he gets up usually uses his hands for the support this is known as with sign ye pucha tha bas gaver sign gaver sign in a child is suggest you of dmd that is dystrophy or a microvascular curse muscular dystrophy but in a adolescent patient it is suggest you of dermato myositis please remember that theek okay? hai and what is seen you can see swelling of the calf muscles over here so what is the mode of inheritance of duchenne's muscular dystrophy in this child it is x linked recessive that means only boys will have the disease females will only be the carrier mitochondrial inheritance easiest way batao tarika if mother has the disease all children 100% children will have the disease agar aisa koi disease hai that is mitochondrial inheritance 26 a girl with hypertension ambiguous genitalia ambiguous matlab confusing genitalia na hi male hai na hi female ka genitalia hai given in the image below presented to the gynae department during your internship cycle the consultant asks you which is the most common enzyme deficiency in this condition important is this is a case of congenital adrenal hyperplasia important is overall most common enzyme deficiency in ch is definitely 21 alpha hydroxylase here the aldosterone levels will be low androgen levels will be high iski wajah se ambiguous genitalia hota hai blood pressure will be low because it is a salt wasting type okay and the potassium levels will be high okay blood pressure is low in the patient because it is a salt wasting sodium lose hota hai to fluid bhi lose hota hai and therefore bp is low but 11 beta hydroxylase and 17 alpha hydroxylase here definitely please remember aldosterone in 11 beta hydroxylase is low androgens are high blood pressure will be high potassium is low here also the blood pressure is high dono mein se zyada common kaun sa hai 11 beta hydro patient mein hypertension hai ya nahi hai to agar patient mein hypertension hai to can it be 21 alpha hydroxylase no it should be 11 beta hydroxylase 287 a male child with severe abdominal distension was brought to the emergency department mother stated that there was a issue of recurrent urinary tract infection bilateral hydronephrosis was revealed on imaging what could be the most probable diagnosis what is the likely diagnosis male child what is the most common obstructive urethral region in a male child posterior urethral valve and investigation of choice is micturating cystourethrogram mcu is the investigation of choice also for vur vasico ureteric reflux so male child may if they are talking about urinary retention and due to that history of recurrent urinary tract infection so please remember that will be a case of posterior urethral valve any which way batao zara pelvi ureteric junction obstruction is when the renal pelvis meets the ureter ठीक है अगर रीनल पेल्वी यूरेट्रिक जंक्शन ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन है तो यूरिन विल नॉट कम इनटू द यूरेटर इट विल रिमेन इन द किडनी तो इट विल कॉज पाइलोनेफ्राइटिस वो समझ में आया चलो ठीक है हिस्ट्री ऑफ रिकरेंट यूटीआर ये बताना मुझे जरा हाइड्रोनेफ्रोसिस भी होगा ओके इंपॉर्टेंट अब डोमिनल डिस्टेंशन कब होगा भाई जब यूरिनरी रिटेंशन इज इन द यूरिनरी ब्लैडर तो यहां पे यूरिन ब्लैडर तक ही नहीं पहुंच रही है तो कैसे तुम बोल सकते हो इट इज अ केस ऑफ यूजी ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन here there is a urinary retention in the bladder why because from bladder it is not able to go ahead into the urethra because there is a valve over here that is a case of posterior urethral valve no issues with this anybody that's important emergency management is insertion of a foley catheter but definitive management will be trans urethral resection or fulguration of the valve What is the next best step in the patient following capnography tracing? क्या दिख रहा है capnography पे? There is a curare notch or a curare cleft. That means the patient has started breathing on his own. Return of spontaneous ventilation. तो अभी patient को हमें breathe करने देना है क्या? नहीं. We want him to relax. The patient is already on ventilator. Ventilator will take care. So give a skeletal muscle relaxant. So he should not start breathing on his own again. 
289, a old woman who has been posted for a surgery is undergoing her pre-anesthetic checkup. Serum creat values were found to be elevated. She also had a history of long-standing liver disease, which among the following neuromuscular blocker is safe for use in this patient. So we know in cases of liver diseases or in cases of kidney diseases, the safest neuromuscular blockers which can be used will be atracurium or cis atra curium. Why at cis atra is preferred over atra curium? Because, very good, the metabolite which is there known as lotinocene, that is known to cause epilepsy, that is high with atra curium but very very minimal with cis atra curium. Why they can be used in liver or kidney? Because both of them are not metabolized by the liver or kidney. They are metabolized by non-enzymatic degradation. Ye pucha gaya. Kaun sa elimination? Hoffman's elimination. No issues with this anybody? That's important. Longest acting kaun sa hota hai? Doxa curium. Please remember. Shortest acting kaun sa hota hai? Shortest acting. Ganta curium nowadays, right? Overall, agar puche, non depolarizing nahi. Overall, no, it is succinyl choline. But non depolarizing mein agar puche, to definitely it is Ganta curium. Okay? No issues with this, anybody? Kya hua? Haan, to lodanosine is a metabolite which is formed after metabolism of atra curium. So, wo lodanosine can cause epilepsy in the patient. So, a serious cis atra is better than atra because cis atra mein wo lodanosine usually very minimal. Hai. So, epilepsy risk is very minimal. Hoti hai. 290. A 70 year old girl present with long standing history of polyarthritis, fever, lymphadenopathy accompanies at times. Patient now complains of painful decrease in vision and slit lamp examination is being performed for the same. The examination shows flare and triangular configuration of keratic precipitate. These keratic precipitates are a characteristic feature of anterior uveitis. And this keratic precipitates, arranging them in the triangular fashion is known as which triangle? Arts triangle. All the given drugs can be prescribed for the patient condition except. So usually we know which two anti-glaucoma drugs are not indicated in cases of anterior uveitis. Prostaglandin analogs like platanoprost. And second is a cholinergic agent like pilocarpine okay drug of choice for anterior uveitis are usually the steroids but in cases of acute attack the drug of choice will be cycloplegic midriatic agent something like atropin okay young farm because it will give pain relief because it will relax the ciliary muscles wo main name hoga emergency mein pain relief chahiye okay? a young farmer from tamil nadu presents with four month history of Spontaneous left nasal bleeding and blockage due to a polypoidal nasal mass, which is given in the image. What is the image? Consist fruit. Jasa. It is a mulberry or a strawberry like nasal mass with disturbance of smell definitely from left nostril. The history and medical examination was unremarkable. What is the preferred treatment modality in this case? What is the diagnosis? Rhinosporidiosis. Okay. Usually, it is aquatic protozoa, which is known to cause infection due to exposure to dirty water. More common in southern parts of India, endemic to the state of Tamil Nadu. Okay, mulberry like nasal mass with recurrent epistaxis is the picture. What is the treatment? Excision of mass with cautery at the base. Drug of choice to prevent recurrence will be Dapsone. Tetracycline and streptomycin are given in case of rhinoscleroma. Okay, septoplasty is done in case of deviated nasal septum and modified Young's operation for atrophic rhinitis. But what is the treatment of choice for atrophic rhinitis? Alkaline nasal douching. But surgery of choice will be modified Young's. Okay, better is, please remember that. A patient who was a case of rheumatic heart disease now presents with shortness of breath and exercise intolerance. X-ray shows pleural effusion. Kaise? Kya dikh hai? Kaun sa curve? LS curve is usually seen and blunting of which angle? Postophrenic angle is not seen. There is blunting because there is collection of fluid in the pleural cavity. This is a case of pleural effusion, also known as hydrothorax. Hydro pneumothorax me kya hoga? Straight line in the air and the fluid will be there. Ya curve ni hota. Shows pleural effusion. Tapping was performed which shows pleural fluid protein is 2.5 gram percent. While serum protein is 6 gram percent. 
pleural fluid to serum LDH ratio is 0.3. What is the likely etiology? Now, pleural effusion can be of two types. Either it can be exudative or transudative. Inflammatory is exudative. Non-inflammatory is transudative. Important, more common will be transudative. Now, please tell me, if I take the pleural fluid is to pleural fluid protein upon serum protein ratio, if it is more than 0.5, it is suggestive of exudative. Less than 0.5 is suggestive of transudative. But the pleural fluid may protein zada hai, that is suggestive of inflammation. Next is LDH, pleural fluid LDH upon serum LDH ratio. If it is more than 0.6, matlab enzyme zada hai, so it is an exudative effusion. Less than 0.6, it is known as transudative effusion. Okay, no issues with this. Or we can say pleural fluid LDH more than two times the upper limit ref upper lim upper reference limit of the serum LDH. Etiology usually exudative effusion can be caused by infections like TB bugger. Okay. It can be caused by autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Or malignancy important. Whereas transudative pleural effusion most common causes CHF congestive heart failure. Usually exudative pleural effusion can be unilateral. But transudative pleural effusion is mostly by itself. Okay. Now here definitely pleural fluid protein upon serum protein 2.5 upon 6 is it more than 0.5 less than 0.5 it is definitely more than point uh, it will be more than 0.5 sorry it will be less than 0.5 2.5 upon 6 now so it should be less than 0.5 pleural fluid to serum ldh ratio is it more than 0.6 or less than 0.6 so this is less than 0.5 less than 0.6 so it is a case of transudative or exudative pleural effusion Transudative pleural effusion and transudative pleural effusion most common causes CHF congestive heart failure. Just going like a bilateral. The second angle has started blunting, so it is a bilateral pleural effusion here as well. Or subse basic logic. A recent question that was exam which is my rheumatoid arthritis ka pucha tha. This is lights criteria used for diagnosis or differentiation of pleural effusion. Important hai. rheumatoid arthritis, TB, malignancy all cause exudative pleural effusion. By default, CHF would have been the answer. 293, a 72-year-old patient presents with sudden onset chest pain and breathlessness. ECG shows the following changes. What is the most probable diagnosis? What is seen on a CECG? ST, elevation. But is it convex upwards or concave upwards? This is convex upwards. So it is party sign of the tombstone appearance. So that is a case of ST elevated MI definitely. Okay. Important is where are you able to see the changes? V1. V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Every lead is showing ST elevation. Along with that, definitely, we are also ab able to see it in the AVL as well. 3 may be thoda baut dekh hai. 1 may be dekh hai. So, it is definitely a case of. Yaad rakh lo, bacho. If it is 1, V5 and V6, it is lateral wall MI. Due to which artery blockage? Left circumflex artery blockage. If it is in the lead 2, lead 3, and lead AVF, it is inferior wall MI. Due to which artery blockage? Right coronary artery blockage. Why? Because the inferior wall of heart is formed by the right ventricle, which is supplied by right coronary artery. Antroseptal MI. Septal is V1, V2, but antroseptal together is V1 to V4. Okay, V1 to V4, antroseptal MI. Important is antroseptal MI is the most common type of MI, which is due to blockage of the left anterior descending artery it is the most common ye question the most common type of mi answer was anterior wall mi okay and the changes will be seen in v1 to v4 and it will be due to blockage of left anterior descending artery now please tell me agar v1 to v6 sab mein hi changes dikh rahe extensive wall mi okay so it is not only the anterior wall but it was also lateral wall mi so it, together it will be called as extensive mi 294 a middle-aged patient was brought to the er who was unconscious and unresponsive on examination pulse was not felt bp was 60 by 40 millimeters of mercury ecg is given below what is the next step what is the ecg showing us VT may proper at least QRS hoti hai. Ya proper QRS bhi nahi ban rahi. It is VF. 
fibrillation. Okay, it is a case of ventricular fibrillation, guys. Please remember that. Okay, and ventricular fibrillation is always and always hemodynamically unstable. Ventricular tachy can be stable or unstable. Fibrillation का मतलब ये ventricle बस ये कर रही है तो blood जाएगा क्या बाहर? तो blood pressure will be very very low. There will be crashing of blood pressure of the patient. ठीक है? So V fib is a shockable rhythm or a non-shockable rhythm? Shockable. So we can give defibrillation, but immediately before the defibrillator arrives, we have to continue. CPR. So start CPR and defibrillation. 295. A 60-year-old male patient diagnosed with depression was started on TCA, tricyclic antidepressants, and now is brought to the emergency room with intake of multiple tablets of TCA. ABG performed shows a pH of 7.3, PCO2 of 35 millimeters of mercury, bicarbonates of 15 milliequivalents per liter. Which among the following interventions shall be done? Important. Jaldi se. Now there are just ko ABG analysis nahi samajh mein just do minute dhyan dena acid based disorders or ABG analysis acid based disorders can be done with the help of ABG analysis ABG analysis mein teen parameters sabse important hote one the most important parameter is the pH of the blood okay pH will decide whether the patient is in acidosis or alkalosis it is not the parameter pH is the one who decides pH normally of the body is 3. Point, uh, 7.35 to 7.45 that is the normal pH of our body next PCO2 if there is any problem in the PCO2, it will tell about the respiratory or metabolic component. Respiratory component. Normally, PCO2 is acidic or alkaline in nature. Acidic in nature. So, PCO2 increases acidosis. PCO2 decreases alkalosis. Next, bicarbonates. Bicarbonates will tell us about metabolic component. Okay. And if bicarbonates are alkaline or acidic in nature. Alkaline. So, if bicarbonates increase alkalosis, decrease acidosis. Normal PCO2 value is 40 millimeters of mercury. The range can be 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. Bicarbonate value normally is 22 to 26 milliequivalents per liter. Now, if I talk about respiratory acidosis, if it is acidosis, pH should be, pH less than 7.35 will be acidosis. pH more than 7.45 will be alkalosis. So, acidosis, the pH should be less than 7.35. Respiratory, hai. that means concept problem, concept me problem hona chahiye. CO2 or a bicarbonate, CO2. Okay, bicarbonate should be absolutely normal. Now, PCO2 me agar dikkat hai, okay, PCO2 me, kya hai patient me acidosis hai. So, jab CO2 badhega tab acidosis ho gaya, ghattega tab acidosis ho gaya, badhega. So, PCO2 value should be high. It will be more than 45 millimeters of, that's it. Next is respiratory alkalosis. So, if it is alkalosis, PS should be? More than 7.45. As it is respiratory, so bicarbonate should be absolutely, absolutely normal. Respiratory, there is some problem in the CO2. CO2 are acidic or alkaline in nature. Acidic in nature. So alkalosis kab hoga? Jab CO2 badega ya CO2 ghatega? When CO2 will decrease, there will be alkalosis. Acidic component decrease ho hai, so There will be acid alkalosis. Next is metabolic alkalosis. Alkalosis, so pH should be more than 7.45. As it is metabolic, therefore, the bicarbonate value, uh, the PCO2 value should be normal. Problem is with bicarbonate value. Now, bicarbonates are acidic or alkaline? Alkaline. So, alkalosis kab hoga? When bicarbonates increase or decrease? When bicarbonates will increase. Last important is metabolic acidosis. Acidosis means pH should be less than 3.5, less than 7.35. Important is here the CO2 should be absolutely normal. Okay. Bicarbonates increase or decrease will cause acidosis. Decrease. ठीक है? Now, इस patient में तुम्हारे pH is how much? 7.3. Less than 7.35. So, it is a case of acidosis. Okay? PCO2 is how much? 35 millimeters of mercury. So, it is almost normal. Bicarbonates are decreased. That is 15 milliequivalents per liter. We know alkaline substance जब decrease होता है, तो the patient lands up into acidosis. So, it is which type of acidosis? We know TCA toxicity can lead to metabolic acidosis. What should be given? This was the recent FMG question, December. We need to give soda bicarbonate, June 2022 question. Okay. Question number 296. A patient of chronic kidney disease presented to ER with complaints of fatigue, muscle weakness and chest pain with breathlessness. ECG is given below. Wife gives history of heart failure for which he was started on spironolactone. Spironolactone is a 
potassium sparing diuretic that means it will retain potassium inside the body what is the next best step diagnosis batao jaldi se definitely is having fatigue weakness chest pain and breathlessness along with that can you see ecg shows what tall tented t waves and tall tented t waves on ecg are suggestive of hyperkalemia so what should be done for hyperkalemia and emergency so please remember very good it is calcium gluconate drug of choice for hyperkalemia acute hyperkalemia is injection of calcium gluconate 10% please remember hyperkalemia kyu hua because the patient was on potassium sparing diuretic therefore there was increased potassium inside the blood which causes hyperkalemia so if a patient is on potassium sparing diuretic or ace inhibitors or arbs there is very high risk of hyperkalemia so please be aware of that patient lands up in arrhythmia as usually no issues with this anybody if they see what is the most effective drug the most effective drug is insulin why because calcium gluconate will not decrease the levels of potassium it will only antagonize potassium q potassium is a relaxing ion but calcium is a contracting ion therefore as there is more potassium the heart is relaxed there is a diastolic arrest in the patient therefore if you want to heart the contract if you want the heart to contract we need to give calcium theek hai so therefore it will not decrease decrease karne wala drug insulin hi hota hai and iv regular insulin can be given to the patient which will send the potassium inside the cell by decreasing its level inside the blood most effective technique is hemodialysis and salbutamol nebulization can be given along with insulin that also has the same mechanism it sends potassium inside the cell hypokalemia hota to very easy we will see a prominent u wave recent need to be question and treatment will be main to bahar se potassium do that is kcl iv or oral a 10 year old child was brought with complaints of pain and swelling in the multiple joints along with chest pain and subcutaneous nodules mother gives history of tonsillitis few months ago you suspect rheumatoid heart disease in the child you decide to start benzathine penicillin g which is the drug of choice for rhd what will be the duration of treatment dose kitna hota hai less than 12 year hai so dose is point 6 okay agar isse bada hai to dose is 1.2 million international unit for syphilis it was 2.4 guys for rhd adults ke liye it is 1.2 children ke liye it is 0.6 million international unit important is what should be the duration if they say it is a case of rheumatic fever that means the heart is not involved then benzathine should be given best answer is lifelong but that is not possible practically therefore please remember from the date of diagnosis kitne time tak dena hai ya fir till what age dena hai so if it is only a case of rheumatic fever give 5 years from the date of diagnosis or till 21 years of age whichever is later jo bhi lamba chalega next in a case of rheumatic heart disease when the heart is involved that is carditis is there in the child in that condition it should be given from 10 years from the date of diagnosis or 21 years of age whichever is later and if the child is having rheumatic heart disease with valvular lesion what are valvular lesions most common is mitral stenosis active ya child mein mitral regurgitation any kind of valvular lesion agar hai this should be given for 10 years from the date of diagnosis or till 40 years of age apne bachche mein kya hai rhd are they saying about any uh, valvular lesion no so it should be given 10 years from the date of diagnosis or till 21 years of age 298 a 68 year old chronic smoker known case of copd is brought to the emergency room with respiratory distress physician extracted blood for abg analysis abg report shows ph of 7.29 less than 7.35 so it is a case of acidosis bicarbonates are 24 ml equivalents per liter that is absolutely normal so the problem is in the respiratory pco2 is 80 ml of mercury so it is a acidic component is increasing therefore it is a case of copd hai na saans nahi le pa raha hypoventilating hai therefore all that co2 is inside the lungs causing respiratory acidosis in the patient what is the interpretation of this report not compensated not uh, fully compensated the reason is basically bicarbonate level are not increasing if bicarbonate levels would have been increasing partially compensated and ph would have been normalized fully compensated usme nahi ghus matlab hydration member 4 was easy 299 a person could not pass urine 
ओके गुड नॉट पास यूरिन इन एबिलिटी टू पास यूरिन आफ्टर अ फॉल शोन बिलो क्या दिख रहा है डेफिनेटली देर इज अ लूज मैन होल कवर विच इज हिटिंग इज पेरिनियम ओके और द बाइसिकल एक्सीडेंट यूजली दे से ओके ऑन एग्जामिनेशन द वाइटल्स आर स्टेबल बट द ब्लाडर इज नॉट पैलपेबल वट इज द प्रोबेबल डायग्नोसिस कितने पार्ट होते यूरथ्रा के दो एंटीरियर एंड पोस्टीरियर पोस्टीरियर आर प्रोस्टैटिक एंड मेम्रेनस एंटीरियर आर पेनाइल एंड पेरिनियल मोर कॉमन यूरथ्रा रक्चर इज एंटीरियर मोस्ट कॉमन इन एंटीरियर इज पेरिनियल इंजरी का हो रही है पेरिनियम इट विल बी पेरिनियल यूरथ्रल रक्चर दैट इज एंटीरियर यूरथ्रल रक्चर bicycle accidents and sorry bicycle accidents and loose manhole covers will cause a perineal trauma leading to a anterior urethral rupture and a butterfly shaped hematoma can be seen theek hai ye bhi diya hua tha tumhare exam mein this is a rgu retrograde urethrogram which is showing a rupture at the perineal urethra please remember that no issues with this question number 300 the last one 35 year old patient comes with midline neck swelling which moves with protrusion of tongue along with cervical lymphadenopathy patient recently started complaining of dysphagia dyspnea and hoarseness of voice these are nothing but pressure symptoms ultrasound neck and fnsc was done histo <laughs> histopathology was given below what is the diagnosis what is seen on histopathology which appearance empty nucleus giving us the orphan anii न्यूक्लियर अपीरेंस ये सरकारी क्वेश्चन है तुम्हारे एग्जाम का एंड विच बॉडीज समोमा बॉडीज यूजुअली इन विच पेशेंट एडल्ट और एल्डर यंग और एल्डरली यंग रिस्क फैक्टर ऑफ शिन एक्सपोजर ऑफ थायरोग्लोसल सिस्ट ओके सो डायग्नोसिस शुड बी ऑप्शन सी पैपिलरी कार्सिनोमा आयरोइड थैंक यू सो मच